There we go. What is up, everybody? How are y'all doing on this fabulous Friday evening? I'm here with GCD. It's hot where I am. <laughs> I feel that, dude. I feel that. It's still a nice area, though. Right. I mean, nice you know, enough for what I could afford, at least. I mean, honestly, I mean, climate is really important to me, but at the same time, in like like the grand scheme of things, it's not the not the worst, you know. I I hear at least two police sirens go by my house every day, so you know what? I I can hand I can handle that if I were to move somewhere else, but just give me some colder weather. Hey no. yo, Montana, what's 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 popping? <laughs> North Dakota, South Dakota, my boys. Last time I was in Montana, it was uh, negative seven degrees. We were driving on uh, snow and ice. Oh heck, you already sold it. You already sold it to me. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty uh, it is pretty cold there. I'm trying to remember that like uh, that Spider-Man clip where it's like uh... I can't remember. Never mind. This joke is dead. <laughs> hey Joe, hey Retro Dude, hello Superstar Planet, what's up Dr. Awesome, and hello uh, Capilla. Uh, ca like uh, Capella? I think I'm saying that right, Capella. Sounds like a uh, offshoot of uh, Cabela. I like that store. It's, it's an alright store, I'm more of a uh, Bass Pro Shop fan myself. Aren't they technically owned by the same company? Uh, yes, Bass Pro Shop, uh, bought Cabrella. They, uh, really. wanted to compete with Bass Pro Shop, and they're like, oh, we're just gonna do Bass Pro Shop, but we're gonna be, uh, more, uh, along the lines of, uh, hunting. And Bass Pro Shop just kept doing what they were doing, and, uh, one thing led to another, and Bass Pro Shop was in a clear lead, and Cabela needed to be bought out to survive. Hmm. I love Bass Pro Shop because of the giant fish tanks in there. They have the uh, freaking bass in there. It's awesome. I like them because they sell a large amount of ammo. <laughs> you can get like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can get like a thousand rounds of 5.56 five, in there. That's pretty cool. Cool. My dad uh, worked there for, worked at a Bass Pro Shop for about, uh, I think, half a year. He worked right next to the ammo uh, store. Nice. He was in the shoes, and I believe my uh, cousin actually worked in. Uh, uh, have you ever heard of Academy Sports? Academy Sports, it it rings a bell. They also have a uh, they they do they deal with uh, guns and hunting equipment and stuff like that. He he talked about uh, when last time we were there, he was talking about the issues with uh, being compliant with that. You know. Oh, I'm sure it's not fun. Ah, uh, no, I. I the more uh, like. The more there's uh, rules like that, it's just, it's, it, it, it could be bad. Rules, only there to waste your time and make things not fun. <laughs> not really, uh, though. That was a joke. All righty. So, last time, we finished up Turnabout Academy with a uh, double feature that we did not expect. Remind me what happened last time. Last time we finished up uh, Turnabout Academy, a uh, guy who takes shits on the floors to uh, slow down uh, things got uh, arrested for yeah. murder. Okay, I remember that part. Uh, and now we're doing the Cosmic Turnabout, uh, turn, uh, turnabout which is uh, we're getting a little bit more about why Apollo took his leave of absence. Right, okay. That still hasn't been explained yet. I forgot. This one does it uh, does it a little different because as you can see, we're going straight into the trial. Oh yeah, that's what that's why I, this case caught me by surprise. I was thinking, hold on, no way the attorney game has done that before. When I was setting up uh, the when I was setting up the thumbnail for it, I I uh, kind of got a basic idea of what's going on. This is a this is going to be a weird case, story wise. Mm -hmm. So let's get right down to it. I'm ready to uh, check it out. I'm ready to party. Are you ready to party, chat? Good. So, so slow to respond. <laughs> it's like that one clip. <laughs> Squidward! Good! Oh. The courtroom bombing incident. Terrible attack launched by the will of a madman. 
That incident perfectly symbolized the state of the legal world in this dark age of the law. Mr. Mu Mr. Wright brought it to a, brought it to a resolution, of sorts. Ted Tonate was discovered to be the one responsible for the bombing. If only it were that simple. Somehow, I can't help but think. That there's a darker influence at work. One that's lurking in the shadows. Waiting. That's why I want to review the trial that was taking place when the bombing occurred. Right, we didn't we don't know about that trial. After all, I've got more than a few personal stakes in it. The cosmic turnabout. A uh, chat's definitely ready to party now. All right. Earth, the final frontier. <laughs> I think you meant first. All the frontiers. One hour remaining until launch. Please begin your final equipment check. Oh boy, we're gonna new guy ran, guys! Check complete. Oh no. Everything's a-okay. <laughs> we're ready here whenever you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> oh. Come in, Act 2. Come in. Do you copy? Yeah, it's a little hot in here. I want to say it, but I don't want to say it at the same time, you know? Among Us! Oh. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> I tried so hard, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you did. Oh, yeah, by the way. By the way, yeah. everyone, uh, happy dis uh, disembarment day for uh, Phoenix Wright. April 19th. Do you want to show them the picture you sent me? Yeah, let's do it. This is the day. Uh, do, 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 do. This is the day Phoenix Wright revealed one of the greatest things on the planet for men, being a father. Happy Phoenix Wright loses his job and gains a daughter day, guys. Fair it's trade. it's her he day. He to find a new job. <laughs> I mean, he gets he get like he loses his job, but he gets a daughter. So you know, good for him. Yeah. You take the good with the bad, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Time for another trial to begin. But this one is different. Um, sorry um, to bother you, but... Oh! Judy! Um, sorry to bother you, but... Are you alright, Apollo? Uh... Was I making a scary face just now? Don't scare her off, she is precious. Do not scare her off before you put a ring on that finger, you dolt! <laughs> oh! Uh, hi, Juniper. Yes, I'm fine. I was just doing my cords of steel exercise. It looks more like, uh, cheeks of steel. <laughs> now I'm all ready to go! Yes. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll be just fine. She's so into him. <laughs> oh he's doing the, he's like coming up with like stupid ass excuses of just, uh, oh, I'm doing cords of steer and, uh, steel. And he's, she's like, I'm going to marry that man. Just look at that <laughs> face. <laughs> oh, I brought you a present from my garden. Yikama. Oh, lotus root. Is this a lotus root? That's right. My grandma says lotus root is good for your eyes. I see. She even says that if you look through the holes, you can help see into the future. It's for good luck. 
Maybe later, you can cook it and... Thanks for this. I'm gonna have some right... Er... Thanks for this. I'm gonna have some right now. It does look like a loofah. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Kinda tough, though. Yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to cook it, you dumbass. You ever had butternut squash? Yes, I have. I love it. Bro, have you ever noticed how butternut squash squash could basically be a rock before it's cooked? Yeah, I I I haven't really messed with the with the raw form, but when it's cooked up, it's really good. If you don't have enough room in your kitchen to store a bat away in case like somebody breaks in, consider a butternut squash. Just it might make a good alternative. Just hit them with a butternut squash. Just like bring up a exactly. cannon. Well, personal personally, I I keep a gun in my kitchen, so uh. And by kitchen, I mean I kind of have one on me almost at all times. Ah. Uh, okay, that's side tangent. Never mind. Throw, uh, just throw the butternut squash. Got it. Okay, you do that. I'll take the gun. We'll find we'll find out which one of us is more successful uh, in case somebody ever does break into our homes. <laughs> the confusion. Happen, actually. The confusion, though. Can you imagine? I pull that, out a gun, you pull out a squash. That is, uh, that is like, a, that is intimidation right there. That'll cause like a stutter. Just, what, like, okay, you don't know, fuck it, I'm out of here. I don't want to, I don't want to trust. I don't want to, I don't want to trust. I don't know what, I don't want to see what this guy's about to do with the squash. <laughs> you can't eat it raw, but thank you for the enthusiastic try. Yeah, Limey, over here it's uh it's still the nineteenth though, so uh yeah. Oops. If she didn't think me weird before, she will now. I've gotta calm down. Do you not see the pattern she's knitting? She loves you for your weirdness, dude. Just roll with it. She's into it. Apollo! I'm sorry I'm late! Hi, Thina. Junie! I didn't know you were coming today. Did you come to cheer Apollo on? Oh, I get it. You sly little thing, you. <laughs> she knows. She so knows. I think she and Phoenix figured it out while she was on the stand of the first trial. I, <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, maybe the judge did too? Even the judge is just like, yo, Apollo. I think it could have been that or it might have just been a joke I did. I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch the first stream again. Nina, <clears throat> stop! Quit kidding around, Athena. The trial's about to start any second. Is everything all set? Oh, Apollo, Apollo. When will you ever figure it out? Figure what out? Wow, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. Is that Larry? It's Larry, but he, he uh, like he shaped his hair to look like a freaking missile. I mean, wherever that dude goes, uh, things are just bound to blow up. So I guess it works. Do you want to do a Larry uh, wannabe or do you want me to? Um, honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. No, this can't be Larry. He'd never get on a rocket. No, I don't think it's Larry. Uh, you want to go ahead and beat him? Yeah, I, I don't mind. <clears throat> <sighs> this is it. It's all over for me. They're gonna find me guilty. This is our client, one Mr. Solomon, Soul Starbuck. Solomon. Solomon. Nice name. You know who Solomon is? Uh, that's uh, someone in the Bible, right? That is correct. He is the writer of the book of Proverbs. He was uh, a little... Uh, his backstory is uh, God said he would give him anything he wanted 
something like that. And Solomon asked for wisdom. So God made him the wisest man in the world. And the book of Proverbs is, is his book. So if you want a good piece of wisdom, guys, some good life advice, check out the book of Proverbs. He's a very famous astronaut who happens to be an acquaintance of mine. You wouldn't know it right now, but he's usually very upbeat and a driven person. The scene of the crime this time happened to be the Cosmos Space Center. Uh, Jordan, you just uh, made it to the beginning of the case, so perfect timing. You missed the moment where uh, Junie was fawning over Apollo a little bit, but uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come. <laughs> Back in high school, my best friend and I were, uh, went there almost a little too much. But that's where we met, where we met Mr. Starbuck. We'd ask about space travel and he'd launch into story after story with so much passion. Back in those days, the man was 100% my hero. Are, are you sure you're okay with being my lawyer, Apollo? Of course I'm sure. I know you, Mr. Starbuck. I know you're not the type to commit murder. Oh, where is Godot as the prosecutor when you need him with a client named, the defendant named Starbuck? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, but uh... oh, wait, actually I just sorry I didn't mean to cut you off, but Godot's in jail and we're having a prosecutor who's uh an inmate, so why not? I mean maybe. I mean, it'll be that'd be too that'd be too nice. I wish I mean, granted, uh, by the time he got arrested, though, he was kind of uh, done being a prosecutor. He was only a prosecutor just to fuck with uh, Phoenix. Fair point. I was supposed to be in space right about now. <sighs> is he sighing or is that just how he breathes? I think it's a sigh. They were re referencing it as a sigh. He's so depressed. It almost seems like an act. His launch getting called off <clears throat> must have been a huge shock. Plus the fact that his like co-pilot probably got stabbed probably has something to do with it too, Apollo. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll probably never like, get the chance hey. to Oh good. <laughs> Sorry, I was just gonna make a joke like Hey Starbuck, uh, you know, Phil Phil's been stabbed. Oh really? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, we have to call off the launch. No! no! <laughs> Send up the gender or someone. I need to go up in space! <laughs> the moon's calling my name! <laughs> the moon's calling my name. I gotta be up there with the stars, man. I'll, I'll probably never get a chance to go to the, into space again. Don't say that. Don't stop believing. That's one thing I hate about these games. They tend to never reference legacy Ace Attorney characters. Oh, sad. And also, hey, Nemu, uh, with Ace Attorney, they, they have one, uh, like, they design the characters, and regardless of what their uh, title is, they're always wearing what they what they do. That's just part of it. Besides, you just have to go into space again. Or maybe he meant it like, uh, you just have to go into space again. Yeah, I don't think I could face Clay in the afterlife if I could just run away in a cell. Face Clay. <laughs> Clay Terran. Terran. I can't believe he was murdered. I mean, he was such a promising astronaut under your command. Yeah, he was a good guy. Always there to pick me up when I was down. No one loved life as much as him, that's for sure. He was always so full of energy. Tell me, you're fine, Mr. Starbuck? <sighs> How could something like this happen to a guy like him, huh? 
never seen Mr. Starbucks so down. <sighs> Clay's gone, and I'm going to prison. I wish I could burn up like a shooting star right now. Mr. Starbuck, you'll be fine! Ah! What is it? What's with the yelling? I'm gonna get to the bottom of this today. You'll see. Wolfo, I think you're I think you're correct. The clay terran, like uh in other words, ground. So one is uh, in the sky and one is in the ground. Huh. In an exchange, I want you to go back into space for you and clay. Promise? Does that mean you have a lot of evidence to prove my innocence? Oh, uh, well, about that. We didn't get to investigate the areas as much as I'd like, thanks to the police. Wait, how? We got nothing. Oh, we got a, oh, uh, bot we got an Optos report. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, dude's dead. Wow. The victim was discovered in the third floor boarding lounge in the main building. Cause of death, stabbing. I'm done for. I'm a goner. Everybody thinks I did it. Thought I was going to soar like a comet, but I, I'm just going to crash like a meteorite. No, don't say that, Mr. Starbuck. Don't count yourself out yet. I know it's hard to lose a teammate, but you've got to keep going. You should read the victim's uh, court profile. Oh, okay, man. The victim in this case, he was a Hat 2 crew member and a close friend of mine. <gasps> I had a feeling. Oh. From the moment, like, when, when, uh, when Rocket Man said, uh, would describe how Clay would say you're fine. I'm like, is he friends with Apollo? Yeah, I think uh, I think this is Apollo's friend. Ooh, that oh is no. <laughs> and what about you, Apollo? What about me? I was just thinking, wasn't Clay your best friend? Hey, it wasn't just a friend, it was a best friend. We need to focus on the trial right now. Are you all ready to go? Apollo. The trial's about to begin. If the defense would please proceed to the courtroom. Okay, here we go. This is it. This is one trial I can't afford to lose. For Clay's sake and our clients, I will find Clay's killer. I don't even think Phoenix has had to deal with something like that. A case where he's like, no, wait, yes, he did. Yeah, he, the second with case. Mia. Hey, Drastic, how you doing? You think it would hit a little harder in this case, though? Because Mia was a teacher, whereas Apollo just lost his best friend. It's a different, yeah, it's a different type of uh, relationship. Court is now in session for the trial of trial of Solomon Starbuck. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mm. Excuse me, Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. What happened to your eye? I'm fine. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Judge like, okay then. Are you sure? I don't... I'm fine, Your Honor! The defense is ready! I'm sorry, Your Honor. He's been like this since yesterday. He keeps insisting that he's, uh, that it's just a sty. Hmm. I suppose that's something he doesn't want to discuss. Maybe he's entering a touchy age. 
Isn't he like 23? He's 23. I mean, technically, you kind of your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 25. Fair enough. It's not a phase, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And the prosecution? <clears throat> the prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Hmm? <sighs> oh my gosh, he broke it already. Well, that was quick. Uh, uh! Why do we bother putting those on him? The prosecution is now ready. Well, it didn't take him long. At, uh, it didn't take him long this time. Paula doesn't even care. What's up, Black Quill? No, 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 then. I shall give the opening statement. Silence. What did I do wrong? <laughs> I'll do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> y you will? What an unexpected surprise. This time, I can't leave it to anyone else. Uh, I see. Oh, does he have connection to this case as well? Mmm. Hmm. Something is off with the two of you today. <laughs> Both are so moody. Wait, how old is Black Will? He's 28. Okay. <laughs> 28, and he's serving a life sentence for murder. That's a shame. You both seem different somehow. Very well. Prosecutor Black Will, your opening statement, if you would. It's ju it was just yesterday. The crime in question the crimes in question occurred at the Cosmo Space Center. Ah, oh, that famous federal research facility of all things related to astrology, right? Astronom uh, astronomy. It's astronomy. Wait. Astronomy. Right. It's astronomy. Anyway, a rocket was set to launch from there. But at 9.28 a.m., before they can even move the rocket to the launch site. Did somebody say boo? <laughs> <laughs> Who put Sandy Cheeks in charge of that? <laughs> <laughs> Which is nothing but SpongeBob uh, references right now. Oh, that's like that's like what my streams have been for the past month. We just love referencing SpongeBob. You know, nothing wrong with that. And uh, Drastic, I'm terribly sorry, but we're focusing on the game right now. Uh, but to answer your question, I'm probably not gonna play Mr. Tomatoes. It doesn't look like a, a game that seems to be my uh, cup of tea. Mr. Tomatoes, never heard of it. Uh, apparently, it's one of those uh, kind of like mascot horror type things. Apparently, it was uh, big about a year ago. Is that right? My word, two bombs. How dreadful. The defendant in today's trial is charged with both the bombings and with murder. One Mr. Solomon Starbuck. For whatever insane, uh, for whatever inane reason, he detonated a bomb on a rocket he himself would be in. Solomon Starbuck? I recognize that name. Isn't he a famous astronaut? Correct, your baldness. Mr. Starbuck was the pilot of the Hat-1 rocket seven years ago. As you may recall, despite some interstellar trouble, his mission was a success. 
Some say it was a miracle he returned alive. I suppose you could say he's a living legend. Oh, I remember now. He's become something of an international celebrity, right? Mankind's hope for the future. I've got to make it back alive. The Hat One Miracle. Come along the captaining space odyssey that will take your breath away. They even turned that incident into a movie and everything. They've got a real space pioneer in court today. <laughs> Judge is so happy. He's like, oh, someone cool. <laughs> this is like my third trial where I prosecuted uh, a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> But even heroes tumble from their lofty heights. Returning to the subject at hand. Ah, oh, yes. The victim was one Mr. Clay Terran, a subordinate of the defendant. Indeed. A loyal dis uh a loyal disciple brutally stabbed to death by his mentor. Stabbed to death, you say? You mean his death wasn't it the result of a bombing? Or you mean his death wasn't a result of the bombing? Correct. Despite his lofty dreams, the victim was seen as an interloper by the defendants. And so he was sent not into space, but to the universe which we mortals cannot see. Clay. I think I've heard enough. This case seems pretty clear-cut at this point. However, there is one thing I'm curious about. That metal box next to the witness stand. Oh. What purpose does it serve exactly? Judge, do you not remember the first case of this of this game? How could I not? I nearly peed my pants running out the door. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Since you asked so nicely, it's your coffin. Ah! Have mercy on me! <laughs> <laughs> I jest. It's evidence. Due to the immense size... We, uh, we've little choice but to lay it where it rests now. We shall get to the contents of the box in due time. Whew. I feel like I just lost 50 years of my life. I got many questions by that statement, but we're just going to move on. <laughs> Does he even have 50 years left? Athena just answers all those questions. It just lays them all out right there. Inner monologue, Athena, inner monologue. <laughs> Enough jabbering. Bobby Fulbright's the name. Injustice we trust. Ah, Detective Fulbright. Very well then. Please explain the details of this incident to the court, if you would. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I figured as much, 13, but he did uh, put it in uh, perspective. This case takes pl uh, takes a day before the first uh, chapter. For those figuring out this what's going takes, on. This takes place before the uh, Ted Tonate blows up the courtroom? Yep. This timeline's all over the dang place. Yep, this takes place before 5-1. This is yeah, one boy. day before 5-1, actually. Yikes. On it! First, take a look at this pamphlet found at Cosmo Space Center. In it, you'll find a diagram outlining the overall layout of the Space Center. Ah, here we are! For a more detailed look at what's uh, on the left side of this building... Take a look at this cross-section that we, uh, that we, the police, have created! 
since the launch pad, uh, see the launch pad in the main building. The launch pad is the square building and the round structure in the main building, right? You got it. The incident, the incident takes place in the launch pad one and in the main building's lounge. So third floor. Okay, cool. I'll be using this diagram during my testimony. It'll make it easier to understand. <clears throat> All right, give us the deets. Just before the rocket was set to launch, two bombs over out. Boom, boom. One in the second floor of the Space Center main building and one in launch pad one. Thankfully, only the two astronauts were in the launch pad one at the time. The two of them were, uh, two of them managed to make it back as far as the boarding lounge. But after the escape, one of the two was found stabbed to death. Hmm, a murder on top of a bombing. Detective, the victim was already dead by the time you arrived at the lounge, correct? Yep, thinking he'd uh, sabotage the bombing. Uh, thinking he'd sabotage the bombing. The defendant killed him right there in the rocket. Just look at this tragic photo. Oh my, is that a knife in the victim's chest? Yes, your honor. It's a knife that cruelly ended this young man's dreams. We couldn't get any prints off of it, though, because the defendant was in his spacesuit. Space okay, the first thing I'm noticing is why is dude not only have one glove? Good point. And what's that thing next to the next to his body? I was noticing that, too. What I wonder what that is. By the way, Detective Fulbright. It's, uh... What is that? I don't know. Hmm. As a uh, do victim? not use type thing right there. Is it cleaning chemicals? I don't know what that is. We'll have to delve into that later. Why are the victim's helmet and right glove absent in this photograph? We had to remove them to, uh, to identify him, your honor. I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity after all. Hmm. Yes. It would be very difficult to identify him without a face or fingerprints. 13th line says, uh, Paulo, uh, notice Paulo's model was slightly turned to see his good eye. Okay, good to know. I'll, I'll, keep, a, I'll keep an eye on it. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to inquire about. What is the round thing next to the victim in this photo? Hey, Judge is asking the same question as us. Something so important to the victim, he took it with him as he escaped the launch pad. A capsule that apparently contained asteroid samples. Well, obviously valuable for research purposes, it has no relationship, uh, it has no relation to this case. Hmm, I see. So, we know that the bomb in the main building was on the second floor. But where was the bomb that was in the launch pad one location? <laughs> that one, uh, that one was on the rocket itself. It was situated around the central part of the rocket. Apparently, the area around the launch pad's elevator was a sea of flames. I would like to submit this diagram report to the rec to into the record. Explosion sparked a fire on the second floor of the main building in the middle level of the launch pad near the elevator. Okay, so pretty much preventing people from coming and going. Hmm. The trial just started and we're already in a bind. You get used to it. Besides, what's the cross-examination for, right? The 
two astronauts were doing during the bombing. That'll be the key. Retro Dude puts up a really good point of what is the motive. That's the most important thing. How powerful were the explosions? Well, the one in the main building wasn't strong enough to be uh, to bring the place down. But the room it went off in, it, it was burned black. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Due to a large part, of course, to me stepping up to, uh, to lead the ev evacuation. Wait, what were you doing there in the first place, Detective Fulbright? Ha 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 ha! I'm Bobby Fulbright, Hero of Justice! I'll be there, wherever and whenever people need my help. I'll go to the other side of the world, or even the edge of the universe! I'm not sure he knows how far that actually is. He, he's a simple man, Apollo, just let him do his thing. Injustice we trust. But I guess I'll leave that one alone. Admiral decision, Justice don't know. Huh? What do you decide? Anyway, could you describe what it was like at the space center at that time? He was figuring out what he was wanting for eat, to eat. That's what he was doing. The bomb cut the power on the to the central bank of elevators and the third floor lounge. It was pitch black in there, I tell you. However, the security cameras and whatnot were running on emergency backup. And how did the evacuation go? I immediately and heroically whisked people uh, down the space center's basement shelter. The basement shelter? Yes, there's an emer emergency shelter beneath the space system, uh, center. Emergency uh, shelter, huh? Oh, here it is, at the bottom of the diagram. The space center is pretty, imp uh, pretty impressive to have its own shelter. Police went off uh, despite tight. Uh, the bombs went out. Uh, went off despite tight security. Police officers and right police were been standing by, giving evacuation instructions. Okay. Hmm. Power outage and evacuation seem unrelated to the murder at this point. I guess I'll leave that aside for now. So there were two explosions in. <clears throat> so there were two explosions in total, correct? Yep, that's right. Hold it. All right, a little bit more uh, detail. Let me get this straight. Mr. Starbuck rigged a rocket when he was going to board with explosives. Or <clears throat> Mr. It, oh, what was I? I miss. I think I misread was as or. Mr. Star Mr. Starbuck rigged a rocket he was going to board with explosives. Huh? What are you talking about? If the defendant really did plant the bomb on his own rocket, he'd get caught in the explosion as well. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You were thinking about the spaceship and how cool it is, weren't you, Judge? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, a simpleton for a simpleton. Fulbright, the motive. Understood, the defendant actually had astrophobia. Oh my gosh. What? The fear of space. Why would he become an astronaut then? No, he probably got the phobia from, his fir from that first uh, trip seven years ago. He had PTSD. Oh no. Astrophobia? What's that? 
A fear of space, naturally. Just the thought of space can cause an afflicted to freeze up. And so, in his terror, the defendant found a way to stop the launch at the last minute. That's absurd. Unfortunately for you, we have evidence. Take a look at these. Xanax. <laughs> what are they? These anti-anxiety tablets were found among the defendant's possessions. Even if I was gun hole to go in space, I probably would, you know, I'd be fine with uh, anti-anxiety. You know, I feel as if that's a little, uh, little scary. Like, I don't, I don't know. Launching, launching in a spacecraft that was, uh, that was uh, crafted by the lowest bidder. I would definitely take his uh, anti-anxiety uh, tablets. I don't know. Considering the fact that you're going to be, you know, piloting a rocket, something that could, uh, you know, go wrong up in space, blow up and uh, debris rains over in an innocent neighborhood. I don't know. I would just say, like, if you're taking anxiety man medication, maybe you shouldn't be in a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he was taking them in secret to quell his fears. There's a multitude of problems with the rocket Mr. Starbuck rode several, uh, seven years ago. Rumor has it, it threatened to crash a number of times as well. That was, of course, very traumatic for Mr. Starbuck. Objection! But that doesn't mean he's going so far as to blow up his own ship! Silence! <laughs> The defendant couldn't bear to mar his good name, now could he? No, not after the media had branded him Soul Starbuck, space pioneer extraordinaire. Given these conditions, the defendant could hardly run away from some base, uh, like some base mutt. What? So that's why you think he resorted to the bombing? Naturally, he constructed this act of sabotage in an attempt to blow up the Space Center, which could eventually abort the launch, but spare his reputation. Ugh. Now I'm sure you understand why we have to bring justice down on this atrocious criminal. Are you sure it was only the two of them? It was just before the spaceship was set to launch, so of course it was only those two. Uh, well, there could have been someone else inside that rocket. Silence. The notion of a third party in the launch pad one is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge. One must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are previ uh, previ precious few with clearance to do so. A fingerprint recon recon uh, recognition device? It sounds as futuristic and complex as a space center. Actually, it's not as amazing as you think, Your Honor. Take a look at this photo. This is the door in the lounge with the fingerprint lock. Only personnel whose fingerprints are registered can pass through. Hmm, I see. That is very different from what I had in mind. And is there a record of the number of people that passed through the door yesterday? Yes, there are only three. The defendant, the victim, and... The director of the Space Center, Yuri Cosmos. That doesn't mean it's possible, or er, then doesn't that mean it's possible that the director is the one who did it? Not a chance. He was in the main building when the bomb exploded at 928. Doing his job directing the launch. 
Besides having an alibi, he has no motive for committing these senseless acts. He has a point. I guess the director can't be considered a suspect then. But why did uh, why was his fingerprints in there though? That's the other that's the question. Good question. Hold it. So while it would appear that the pair barely escaped with their lives, in actuality, one of them had already been murdered inside the rocket. That's the angle the prosecution wants to push, correct? You got it! In fact, that's what I've been trying to say this whole time! If the victim had been alive, alive he would have sure uh, he would for sure try to stop the bombing. Is there any chance Mr. Uh, Terran could have been killed before he boarded the rocket? They were both alive and well at boarding time and embarked under their own power. Their hearts full of hopes and dreams of space. And then both of their hopes and dreams were dashed. If I may continue my uh, explanation, after the evacuation order was given, the defendant made his escape, carrying the victim to make it look like a rescue. Hold it! And who was the first to find the victim? Actually, there were two of them. The Space Center director, Yuri Cosmos and Detective Candace Arm. One of them was the detective? Yo, why were there so many police officers here? That's a good question. I mean, Fulbright being there, yeah, sure, whatever, but there were two detectives there? Yep, Detective Arm specialized in bombings, you see. She and the director was ordering at the evacuation following the explosions. They were also worried about the astronauts, so they hurried over to the boarding lounge. Wait, could that be the wife of uh, the, the first guy? Of the bombing hmm. guy? I don't know, maybe? That's when they discover the victim along with the defendant. Two witnesses, huh? One of them is a detective. I doubt either one would have anything to say that would help me. I think that pretty much covers the details of this case. Only the victim and the defendant were on the launch pad when the former was killed. If this is the truth, then only Mr. Starbuck could have com carried out this crime. What? What? <clears throat> what little I could get out of him only hurt my case. <laughs> justice, do uh, justice Dono. Foolish is the warrior who rushes headlong into battle. Preparation is an essential element of battle, so I advise you take a gander at this. What is it? Footage from a security camera. As the two astronaut, uh, astronauts emerge from the bowels of the launch pad one corridor. The boarding lounge security camera captured their desperate escape. Now, I would uh, direct your attention to what the defendant is shouldering. Which you can see is none other than the lifeless body of the victim. What? Order, order I say. 
This... This lines up exactly with what the prosecution has been asserting. I should have known Black Quill would have something like this ready. This isn't looking good. <laughs> no, no, not in the slightest. Uh, Apollo? How exactly did they determine that Clay was already gone in that footage? Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Whether Clay was still alive at this point is pretty crucial. Your Honor, please take another look at the footage. Isn't it possible that Mr. Terran was still alive here and that Mr. Starbuck was helping him? Why, I believe you're right. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. Silence. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it looks like to one-eyed hotheads and a dotar. But it only makes sense if the victim, uh, it only makes sense if it's the victim's dead body. What do you mean? Fulbright, explain it to Justice Dono. You got it, ready kid. If the murder had occurred in the lounge, someone could have spotted it. Anyone can enter the lounge after all. But doing it while they were alone in the spaceship, there is a uh, there's a horse of a uh, that's a horse of a different color. Objection! But you can't deny that there's a possibility the murder could have happened in the lounge. All that video shows is a man helping his fellow astronaut out. Silence. Your assertion is based on emotion. It's based on its, uh, it's based in your, uh, it's based in your belief that Mr. Starbuck would surely help his own disciple. But you have no logical explanation as to why the victim could still be alive. Uh. Unfortunately, Mr. Justice, the prosecution is right. Your argument is lacking in sound logic. But it sounded perfectly logical to me. Well, Mr. Justice, if you've no further question, if you have no further objections, I believe it's time to bring the cross-examination to a close. Objections? Well, I... Your Honor, the defense requests a little time to think and regroup. Hmm. Given the facts, I'm not sure I see the need. What is it, Athena? It's just... There's something that's been bothering me. Oof. If it isn't the defense stalling for time, as always. Very well. I'm feeling generous. You may have a small measure of time. Yes! You have five seconds. Five seconds! After that, I declare this cross-examination to be closed and a verdict to be rendered. Your baldness, rise your garvel, uh, gavel high. It's time for a countdown. Oh, oh. It's the final countdown ready. You don't have time. Fit it out, Athena. Only three more seconds. Ack! Look, I don't think the prosecution's explanation is very complete. Meaning? Meaning there's something missing. Like they conveniently left it unexplained. Something they didn't explain. Something they didn't explain. Oh, you're right. I think I know what you're talking about. Your five seconds are up, Mr. Justice. 
Is there anything about the prosecution's argument you'd like to rebuke? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, there is. There's something the prosecution has yet to make clear to this court. Hmm. Well, if you put it that way... What is that? What is it that the prosecution has failed to explain? Why the body was moved. They failed to explain why Mr. Starbuck would bother bringing the body back at all. If the defendant wanted to kill the victim, why didn't he just leave his body in the rocket? Why go through all the trouble of bringing him all the way back to the boarding lounge? Oh, that's true. I don't think we heard the prosecution's thoughts yet. That's because they have none, Your Honor. After all, how does one explain to something so... Er, after all, how does one explain something so illogical? The prosecution is claiming that the defendant moved the victim's body. But what if the entire premise of that argument is wrong? Then let's hear your theory, Mr. Justice. The defense proposes that the... <clears throat> the defense proposes that the defendant didn't kill the victim. He was helping him. Ah! Fulbright. Explain it for our sad friend here before I nod off to his monotone mon uh, monologue. Inform him, uh, inform, him, uh, inform him exactly why Space Boy moved the victim. Huh? They've gotta be joking! It's simple! Mr. Starbuck did what he did to direct suspicion away from himself! He wanted to create the impression he heroically risked his life to save his partner. That's why he made sure to make it look, uh, make it to the security camera, so there be a, a recording. At the very least, he appeared to have achieved success with you and the old man. Uh. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. The average person wearing a spacesuit weighs easily over 200 pounds. Saving the life of a partner who weighs as much while trying to escape deadly flames. What a dramatic sob story felt for the silver screen. Indeed. I was completely taken in by the humanity of the story. You see, yet the true ending is that all traces of his hammy act were meant to be blown up. Yes, and now we arrive at the thrilling conclusion. The third explosion! Objection! What are you talking about? There are no third explosions! Silence. Indeed, you are correct. But, as, but that is thanks to Detective Arm. It was she who identified and secured the bomb. However, it doesn't change the fact that the third bomb was discovered in the lounge. The steel coffin beside the witness stand. That would be... A bomb transport case. We use that to transport the deactivated bomb here. It was found in the lounge. A bomb in the form of a most distasteful toy. Oh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> They used the the elephant and the I forgot what the other one was. Was it a rhino? Uh, yeah, it was a rhino. It's a phony fanty and bum rap rhiny. <laughs> they put them both in. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. What? One on the second floor of the main building, one on the watch pad, and one in the lounge. The defendant planned to set off three firework displays. Fortunately, the third was discovered before it could be detonated, for had it not, the victim's body and other vital evidence would have surely been Im immolated. Immolated, yeah. Before you utter a word, know that the evidence supports me. Ugh. It's like he's reading my mind. As it's still undergoing forensic investigation, I do not have the evidence on hand. However, know that a particular item was found in one of Mr. Sawbuck's pockets. Specifically, a bomb detonation switch. You found what? Yeah, I think his I think his goose is cooked. <laughs> I suspect the defendant had no time to destroy such damning evidence. When the space center director and detective arms stumbled uh, across the murder. So he thought to hide it in his pocket. Feeble brained a uh, feeble brained that he is. Uh. No! Mr. Starbuck would never do anything like that! Justice Dono. Open your eyes and see the truth. Hmm. This appears to be irrefutable evidence the accused set off the explosions. No! There has to be some kind of mistake! This can't be true! Still can't accept it. You believe in your client. Come what may. Then why don't you cross-examine the defendant himself? This has got to be a trap. It's like Black Will's controlling the entire game. Yeah, seems like he was waiting for me to bring up the body moving issue. Why did you say that? Because he had because he had just the right argument when I pointed it out. And, and to really rub it in, he had a decisive piece of evidence up his sleeve too. He was trying to shake my faith in Mr. Starbuck and break me down. Then making you cross-examine Mr. Starbuck at this point is part of his plan too? Totally underhanded. But I wouldn't expect anything less from him. Now, let us hear from the arc, uh, the arc villain, the Phoenix murderer himself. Fame, uh, famed astronaut, Solomon Starbuck. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Solomon Starda, uh, Starbuck, astronaut. Uh, how did this happen? Mr. Starbuck, you aren't looking very well. Will you be able to give? Will you? <clears throat> will you be able to give testimony? Uh, no. Well, unfortunately, no is not an option. <laughs> you are being accused of the Space Center bombing and the murder of Clay Terran. Please testify to these allegations. Uh, 
Um, mind if I take this suit off? It's getting really heavy. Silence. It's not the weight of the suit that you feel, but of your sins. Prepare to carry that weight for the rest of your life. Banish me to the moon. I don't care anymore. Wow, that was super negative. Is he gonna be all right up there? He'll be fine. I think. As long as he doesn't totally give up and say he did it, that is. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. You we okay? mentioned we mentioned that uh, Super Sans that he looks like Larry. <coughs> we we noticed that. I didn't kill him. All I did was support Clay over my shoulder and get us out of that rocket. Like always, I took the elevator down to the middle level and headed to the corridor. Clay had passed out by the time we got to, uh, got the order to evacuate. I didn't kill Clay. I was trying to save him. So you assert you didn't set off the bomb or murder the victim. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you think I'm lying, right? I reserve all judgment until after I've heard your full testimony. <sighs> I'm sure you don't believe me. I bet you don't even believe I'm an astronaut. I don't think the judge doubts that. <laughs> Who wears a suit like that, except for an astronaut? Hmm. I will say that when I saw you in that movie, you appeared quite courageous. Though I suppose reality never quite lives up to fantasy. <sighs> I guess I'm just a big disappointment. <laughs> I really don't care what happens anymore. <laughs> oh no, he's completely given up. <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> what a depressing fellow. If if you were to join me in the clink, I imagine that annoying sign of yours would rub off on the other inmate. They all just start sighing in unison. <sighs> <laughs> like how, uh, like how it's rubbing off Professor Blackwell a second ago. Huh? That was Blackwell sighing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. Mr. Starbucks' testimony contains a glaring contradiction. Question is, what does it mean? Even if Mr. Starbuck is my client, I can't be gun shy now. It's time to find out the truth. Let's find that contradiction. Like always, I took the elevator. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, there is an elevator. Never mind. <laughs> elevator acquired. Clay had passed out by the time we got to the order to evacuate. Gave evacu evacuation instructions immediately. There was a power outage. Affected area remained dark. Security system switched over to emergency power. Vacuees moved to the basement shelter. I was trying to save them. Okay, we we believe you, Starbuck. Okay, let's just start pressing. 
So what you're saying is that the victim was still alive at the time? Of course. He was alive and well. Silence. If so, then you admit you took a man who was alive and well and silenced him permanently with this. What? No! Ah! Black hole confirmed! Dead ahead! Ah! It's so good, Captain! I'm getting sucked in! Mr. Starbuck! You're not in space! Please give your testimony seriously! It was just nerves. But maybe I shouldn't have uh, said that he was alive and well. It was more like he was slumped over. Those are complete opposites and it's a spectrum! Oh no. Oh boy. Oh wait! Yes? What you got? There was a power outage at the same time. How did he use the elevator? Ooh. Shoot. Let's go with it. Objection. Oh, no. <laughs> Consider the evidence. There's obviously something wrong with that statement. Your, ga your gall knows no bounds. It's shocking, really. What's that supposed to mean? You stand there, brazenly objecting to perfectly factual statements. One does not see such shameless behavior that often. A penalty for our shameless attorney. Oh no, looks like Blackwell is turning the judge against me. I thought that was, I thought we had something there. My bad. I I did too. I hold it. Is the elevator inside the launch pad? Or uh, is that the elevator inside the launch pad area? That's right. We all use, we always use it to get to and from the cockpit. That makes sense. So he was just using the route he always used. In spite of the. In spite of the fact that there had, <clears throat> in spite of the fact that there had just been an explosion, huh? I think Mr. Starbuck is hiding something. Something pretty big. Okay, I think we have to we have to present something there. Hmm. Oh. Up. The middle level of the launch pad near the uh, uh, no, near the elevator. Okay. It was right at the elevator. How could if the explosion went off on the on the rocket? How did he uh, take the elevator? Interesting. Objection. Mr. Starbuck, I need your testimony to be as accurate as possible. Was I not being accurate? No, because it's impossible for you to have taken the elevator down to the middle level. What makes you say that, Mr. Justice? Please recall where the bomb went off in launch pad 1. Also recall that after the explosion, the middle level elevator was engulfed in flame. Oh, you're right. Which means... Exactly. The launch pad's elevator would have been unusable. In other words... Mr. Starbuck, your statement directly is directly inconsistent with the facts. <laughs> What's with the helmet? Ah! Mission Command! Mission Command! Do you hear me? Come in, please! Objection! This is Mission Command. I order you to pay attention. Stop this nonsense and answer my questions, Mr. Starbuck. Ah, uh, my helmet. Ah, 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 my eye. 
oxygen tank. Oxygen concentration and body temperature declining. Requesting medical assistance. Oh dear. Is this grounds for a mistrial? Good question. <laughs> Mr. Starbuck, we're not in space right now. Please stop pretending you have lost consciousness and stand back up. I, I apologize, Your Honor. I forgot I was still on Earth. I feel, we just get, uh, I feel like we just got a real glimpse of Solomon Starbuck, the astronaut. Yeah, he seemed more like an astronaut now than when he was doing all that sighing. Mr. Starbuck, please explain the inconsistency in your statement about how you use the middle level elevator. I, uh, was nervous and I said the wrong thing. I I'm sorry. I actually, uh, took a different route, I, I think. A different route? I hope you're able to deliver a straight story this time. I'll get it right this time. Maybe. No, no, I mean, I mean, prob probably. Probably. It's understandable to be nervous, but let me remind you, accuracy is paramount in court. Hey, Travis, how you doing? My escape route. Let's see. Uh, my escape route. What I said before was a mistake. I, uh, I remember now. I took a different route. Uh, maybe. Probably. With the capsule and clay in my arms, I made my way down the upper level. So you're saying you escaped without using the elevator? Th that's right. There's a ladder, a ladder that spans the upper and middle levels. I used that letter, a la ladder to get to the middle level. Luckily, the fire hasn't reached the ladder, so we could make our escape that way. In the capsule you mentioned, I suppose you mean the thing next to Mr. Terran here? Was the capsule that important that you'd risk your life to take it with you? It almost goes without saying, but yeah, that capsule contains asteroid samples. Therefore, it's invaluable to, as research material. With his spacesuit on, Clay weighed a ton, but securing the, securing the capsule was also important. I need you to answer to the best of your ability. Mr. Starbuck, please remember that your verdict is riding on your testimony. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm guilty after all. I wonder if you could see the stars in prison. I bet it's more comfortable than a spaceship. How could you mistake such a basic fact? Hey, everyone makes mistakes, but try thinking about the vastness, uh, vastness of space instead. From Earth, it takes four light years to travel to our nearest neighboring star. So you see, compared to the vast expanse of safe of space, here are error, uh, human errors insignificant. We should consider it just a little more significant than zero. Enough jabbering. Get on with your testimony. Uh... 
took a different route, probably. Maybe? Probably? Did I hear you right, Mr. Starbuck? I didn't say either of those things! Ah! Mission Command- uh, Control! Come in, please! An error has occurred in the sound system! Activate the emergency tin can telephone! Oh no! Tin can telephone are in ineffective in the vacuum of space! Silence! Stop this nonsense, or I will sever you and your tin can telephone. All right, I'm begging you. I'll tell the truth. Just don't sever anything. Apollo, is he going to be all right? Doubt it. <laughs> I'm starting to think he's not. Um, let's see. So about when we were running away. Down from the upper level. Hold it. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, how does he go? Like, now that I think about it, how is he going to be uh, going down that ladder? Hmm. Unless he just yeeted Clay. Or if Clay wasn't actually dead. That would explain it. That's right. That's what I said, isn't it? Granted, that root does exist. So to recap, you had clay over your right shoulder and the capsule in your left? Yeah, that's, it's really important, so I couldn't let it get burned up. So even though clay was very heavy, I couldn't afford to carry him with both hands. I did the best I could with what uh, with him, uh, with over one shoulder and the capsule in my other hand. I don't think the meaning of what he just said, or er, I don't think the meaning of what he just said has hit him yet. <laughs> you know what you had to do with that statement, Justice Dono. Yes, I know. Well, I've come this far. No turning back now. Time to present some evidence. So, Mr. Starbuck escaped with Clay in the capsule, which means... It's just like the footage. I can see why he couldn't run, though. He must have... He must have weighed over 200 pounds just by himself. Yeah, and he had to support Clay, who was another 200 pounds. Plus, he had to ensure the safety of that capsule. I don't think I could have I could even walk under those circumstances. Walking straight forward is probably about all I would have been able to manage. All right, let's present it. Do it. Mr. Starbuck, why don't you just tell us the truth? The, the truth? Um, let's see. The earth is blue. No, no, that, that's not right. So, uh, I guess the earth isn't blue? Yeah, that's it. The truth, Mr. Starbuck. Gah! The oxygen constra uh, con concentration is super low in this area. Prepare the emergency oxygen tanks. Mr. Justice, the witness appears confused. Please help draw out the truth from him. Mr. Starbuck, under the circumstances at the time, you couldn't possibly have reached the boarding lounge via the upper level route. Huh? Not as long as the escape, not as long as this was along the escape route. Take that! 
to get down from the ladder to the middle level where the launch pad one corridor is. You would have to go down this ladder. Isn't that right, Mr. Starbuck? Uh, of course! That was the only way we could escape! Objection! But how would that work? At the time, you were supporting Mr. Terran over your shoulder, were you not? And remember how... And remember, he was in full space gear as well, putting it... Putting him at over 200 pounds. Ah! Uh, oh! Well, it's easy to the moon! Gravity is only one-sixth of what, of what it is on Earth! Objection! But Space Center is located on Earth. So being, er, sort of being an octopus climbing a ladder with an adult male in space gear in the other arm. Or, short of. While carrying the capsule in your other hand is impossible, wouldn't you say? Oh! So, Mr. Starbuck. How exactly did you climb down the ladder with that with your arms full? Ah! Mr. Starbuck, come clean and tell us the truth now. Ah! Engineer! Where's that engineer? Oxygen leak detected due to fa faculty emergency. Ah! What the? He's flying the coop! <laughs> ah! Help! I'm caught on the ceiling! Um, help? Anyone? Bailiff, prepare the cherry picker. We must launch our rescue mission at once. Well, that's one way to take off while being questioned. I'd rather prove his innocence so he can go to space again for real someday. Now then, Mr. Starbuck, do you think you can keep your feet planted on the ground? Yes. I apologize for losing control. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Uh, not that. Anything but that. What's going on? This isn't the Mr. Starbuck I know. It appears Space Boy is prone to deception. Witness. Yikes! Y yes I thought your story odd, but perhaps the inconsistencies can be explained as the result of the medical side effect. Ah! Prosecutor Blackwell, please! Please don't talk about that! What are you talking about, Prosecutor Blackwell? Oof. Didn't I already state that Space Boy is, ironically, terrified of going into space? That's why he took some precautions just before the launch. For you see, traces of this anti-anxiety drug were found in his system. Oh. I sense things are about to nosedive. You got it all wrong! I told him during the investigation too! I don't know anything about any drugs! I never took any medication, I swear! It was found in his system, but he doesn't remember taking it? How could that be? Somebody must have slipped them to me! But I guess maybe that's why I don't remember, because of the side effects! Yeah, that's why I don't remember much about what really happened. What? Order! Order in the court! 
We can't get any useful testimony out of him if he doesn't remember anything. Well, this certainly explains why his testimony kept changing. Ugh, why didn't he just tell me he could remember? I guess he didn't want anyone to find out he was terrified of going into space. Uh, maybe I really did do it. Which brings us to the answer of our original question. Of how the witness climbed down the ladder with a dead body. It does? Uh, so what is it? A dead man feels no pain and makes no complaints, Justice Dono. So the body was simply dropped down from the top of the ladder. Oh my, I see. And the defendant could climb down with his free hand. Objection! Drop the body down? Who would do such a disrespectful thing? A murderer? <laughs> the fair. They've already they've already killed it, so. <laughs> Besides, dropping the body down will leave marks on the body itself. So you're capable of quick thinking. Yes, you are correct. Really? Oh, uh, thanks? <laughs> ah! Huh? What's this? It's the oxygen tank from the victim's spacesuit. It's ruptured. And I'm sure you can figure out why. You can't be implying it ruptured when the defendant dropped the victim's body. I am, for they fra the fracture easily when struck. Objection! Even if that's true, if even if that's true, the tank's explosion and sharp shrapnel. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Even if that's true, the tank's sh explosion and shrapnel would leave m its marks on the body. Yet, according to the autopsy report, only the knife was found on the victim's body. You're clearly grasping at straws with this line of reasoning. Silence. A spacesuit isn't heavy for the sake of being heavy, Justice Dono. It's inclu it includes the latest technology devices, and it's made of the fabric of tomorrow. This fabric is made to protect astronauts from the dangers of space. So falling a few Earth yards would hardly leave a mark on the wearer. Objection! Then shouldn't it be impossible to stab someone through it as well? He does have a point. It should. And yet, through sheer coincidence, the knife slipped through a weak spot in the suit's structure and found its way to its target. What are the chances? You forgot that our killer is an astronaut himself with knowledge of how the suits work. He's got me there. And now my argument has been proven. Space Boy killed the victim in the rocket and then dropped his body from the upper level. After climbing down, he shouldered the body and made sure the camera recorded them. There's no room to, for debate about these facts. It is clear that Solomon Starbuck is the only one who could have killed Clay Terran. Ah! Here, the report regarding the astronaut's oxygen tank. Consider it my send-off gift. Feel free to use it as payment to cross the river Styx. Ah! Victim stake was ruptured with 0% left. The defendants had 80%. Wait.
Huh. It clearly says 50 right there. Interesting. Let's see. The display on the astronaut's left shoulder shows the oxygen remaining. I guess that means these glowing uh, cyan digits represent the amount of oxygen in the tank. <sighs> I'm done for. I'm going to prison instead of space. Space boy. Y yes. Take heart. The bejeweled night sky is still beautiful even when viewed through bars. You mean the stars are as seen from prison? That's right. Your cell will be your spaceship. Picture the view through the iron bars. It's like being an astronaut in your own craft for all time. Hello, Flinch. How you doing? <laughs> That's not a half bad thought. Uh, Mr. Starbuck? Prosecutor Blackwell got to him good. Spaceship prison cell, fly me, my guilt, and my despair into the deepest, darkest space. And then, let's get sucked into a black hole together! Objection! This is Starbuck, you can't give up hope! I think he already did. Oh! Yes, Apollo? You know... Clay really looked up to you. He said you're an incredible man. He said you'd never give up on your dreams and passion for space, no matter the situation. He said that? So don't give up now and help me prove your innocence. For the sake of the man who respected you and believed in you, Clay Terran! For Clay! Humph. You're wasting your breath. You good there, buddy? Oh, Looks I think like he's he, good. Yeah, I think he got his confidence back. Apollo, thank you. I can see things clearly now. Mr. Starbuck. I'm... I'm fine now. Thanks for reminding me of my life's mission. Right. We'll both be fine. I'll prove you're innocent. You'll see. And after that, we'll get you back into space. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll there, buddy. I'm st I still fear space. <laughs> That's still the same. Everything else, I I'm no longer depressed. Rah! You've ignited the booster rockets of my soul! I'm on fire! I don't know, I think he, it seems like he's getting over it. Okay. I am Solomon Starbuck, astronaut, a cosmic hero chosen by the universe itself! This is no time for, for, uh, there's no time to be whimpering and crying. I can't let you and Clay down. Balderdash. The sun, the moon, all of space is calling me. Solomon Soul Starbuck. Ready for launch? Begin the countdown. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. <laughs> Lift off! <laughs> That's one way to motivate a man. 
Well. Godspeed there, soul. <laughs> I feel like I've witnessed an actual rocket launch. Apollo, you did it! You broke Prosecutor's black hole grip over Mr. Starbuck! I can't take all- I can't take the credit. It was all Mr. Starbuck. He pulled himself through. <laughs> if you simpletons are done massaging one another's egos, no matter how positive your mood, my advantage remains unshakable. I have but to wait for the final gu ver guilty verdict. Isn't that right, your baldness? Ugh. Can't let up now. I have to stop Blackwell. I have to see this through. Mr. Starbuck has, er, Mr. Starbuck just has to make it back into space. I won't allow Clay's dream to remain unfulfilled. Got to destroy Blackwell's argument somehow. Think, Justice, think! The only people at the launch pad one were Clay and Mr. Starbuck. And if Clay was already dead by the time this footage was taken, the only person who could have killed him is Mr. Starbuck. So the only way to counter Blackwell's argument is... If I can prove that Clay was still alive at the boarding lounge. In which case, I should be able to find some contradictions in the evidence itself. Now let's see. About this data that we just received. This supposedly proves that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay's body in launch pad one. But if I'm going to prove that false, then there must be something I can use here. Enough of this farce, your baldness. Let's have your verdict. Objection! Prosecutor Blackwell, you seem to be in quite a hurry to rush the verdict. But about this oxygen... But about this oxygen tank data you just submitted now, says that Mr. Starbuck's tank had 80% remaining while Mr. Terran, uh, yeah. It says Mr. Starbuck's tank had 80% remaining while Mr. Terran's had zero. Do you stand by the accuracy of this report? Of course. Then I guess it simply means that it's faulty as far as evidence goes. You will explain what you mean, Justice Dono. It's simple. The evidence contradicts the facts of this case. Take a look here at the detailed description and you'll see what I mean. I hope you have some evidence, Mr. Justice, because I don't see what's so contradictory. Yes, Your Honor. Right away. This is the evidence that the oxygen tank, oxygen tank report stands in contradiction to. Take that! How does this evidence present a contradiction? The problem is this part here. The music didn't change. I got worried for a second. I'm like, what? <laughs> Note the, uh, note the remaining oxygen in Mr. Starbuck's tank as he carried Mr. Terran. Hmm. It appears to say 50. Yes, but according to the data, our client's tank had 80% remaining. The oxygen tank increased? I see your honor, I see your honor finds it as strange as I do. It's bad enough that there is a contradiction, but the increase in oxygen is beyond illogical. Oh my, you're absolutely right. What is going on here? Silence. Oof. I too 
find it odd that the oxygen remaining has increased. It would be as odd as if my rashes were to increase. But what does that prove? It doesn't change the fact that it, the defendant carrying the victim's corpse. Objection! <laughs> I'm going to bet you don't get more rations because you don't abide by the rules. Ooh, you got him, Apollo. <laughs> either way, the oxygen remaining, er, either way, the oxygen remaining shouldn't increase just as your rations don't, er, oh. <laughs> either way, the oxygen remaining shouldn't increase just as your rations don't increase. Therefore, this new information is critical. We can't overlook it. Silence. In that case, do you have an answer to this riddle of the mysteriously increasing oxygen? You better not disappoint, or I'll declare the inconsistency as a mere equipment malfunction. Hmm. <laughs> Prosecutor Blackwell has a point. I suppose it could be a simple malfunction. Mr. Justice, you cannot prove an adequate con uh, Mr. Justice, if you cannot prove an adequate counterargument to this point, I'm afraid I must bring this trial to an end. So do you think you can explain why the oxi why the remaining oxygen level increased? I think it could. I think it's because it's a different person. I think so too. Of I course, think... I can. The thing to do at a time like this is turn my thinking around. Mr. Starbuck has no memory of it, but he claims to have carried clay. So this man with the fifty on his tank ought to be Mr. Starbuck. But if anything display on his oxygen tank should have shown in 80. It's a clear contradiction between the report and security footage. So what I should be asking is not, why did the oxygen level increase? But what had to happen, or, but what had to happen to make it look like it increased? It's a different guy. Am I making some kind of mistake in my base assumption here? Well, Mr. Justice, we're waiting. Yes, Your Honor. I'm ready to answer. This is why the remaining oxygen appears to have increased. The victim was carrying the defendant. Uh, actually... That makes sense, too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what if it was the other way around? The other way around? Do you care to explain, Mr. Justice? As you can see, Your Honor, both men had their helmets on in this footage. But it turns out, this is where our base assumptions went astray. We assumed that it was Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Tarrant, but it was the other way around. It wasn't Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Tarrant at all. It was Mr. Tarrant who was helping Mr. Starbuck to the boarding lounge. Oh, ho, ho. it was what? Order, order, Mr. Justice. You mean to tell me that the person in the in the right of this image is the victim, Clay Terran? The only way the riddle of the increasing oxygen level can be solved, Your Honor. At this point in time, the remaining oxygen in the victim's tank was at 50%. And when the victim was found in the boarding lounge, his tank was at 0%. That's right. There's nothing contradictory about the oxygen level decreasing. This means Mr. Terran was alive as they made their escape to the lounge. Silence. 
Oomph. How short, uh, short your memory is. Have you forgotten what you said your, uh, yourself proposed? Have you forgotten what you yourself proposed? Even if the victim was alive at this point in time. How did he descend the ladder with his arms full? Objection! Prosecutor Blackwell, can't hurt me with a broken blade. You can't use my, my metaphors against me. <laughs> Excuse me. It's true that we don't know how they got down the ladder. I suppose that matter needs further investigating. But we have proven that Mr. Terran was alive when he reached the boarding lounge. This fact alone shatters your claim and opens up the possibility that the victim could have killed, could have been killed by a third party. <laughs> there were two people who claimed to be the first on the scene. But can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. The two people were Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmo, right? You think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. It seems we'll have to hear the testimony of the first two people on the scene. Score! Come to think of it. Detective Arms should be here in the court right now. Bailiff, could you please show Detective Arm to the stand? You. I have an announcement, everyone. W what's the meaning of this? We're in the middle of a trial here. Please remain calm and listen carefully. Someone has reactivated the bomb. The bomb was defused, but, 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 it's about to explode. Tornade did this to, uh, do you think he did this to protect the detective? Hmm. But he ended up killing her in the ex- Lord! Oh yeah, the Yuri. Uh, Yuri was the one that was was the victim in the first case, wasn't she? Oh, okay. A bomb? No. Wait, ah! I everyone, run! I can't remember anymore. He got to die! Oh, it was Candace. Oh, okay. So it was someone else. Oh no! Everybody's panicking. I have no idea, bro. I can't, I can't keep up with this game's storyline. The storyline's kind of all over the place. It's one of those games you had to like finish Science. it so you could put all the pieces together. <laughs> Headless chickens with the death wish, the lot of you. Calm yourselves uh, uh, for all else. Come on, Apollo, let's get out of here. But what about Mr. Starbucks' dream? And who will carry out Clay's final wish? I don't care what happens to me. I'm not letting some bomb blow up the truth forever. I, I. I refuse to let things end here. Apollo, this is no time for the, to be dramatic. If we don't get out of here now, we're gonna die. Come on, this way. Hey. Ouch! Let me go! Er, oh, that's Juniper. Apollo! It's Juniper? She hasn't evacuated yet! <laughs> Juniper! Are you alright? Apollo! No! Not that way! Ah! And this is when we thought Apollo died. 
To be continued. Well, that was a explosive finale. That was something that blew my mind. <laughs> I'll be right back if you want to continue this. I'm pretty sure we could probably finish this entire case. I yeah, honestly, I think we can't. You know what? I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna, I need more water. I'll be back. All right, guys, we're gonna go take a short recess. We'll be right back. All right, I am back. Don't know if GCD is back, though. That is the question. Do, 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 do. What did you think of uh, Aristotle Mean in uh, third case? I thought he was a really, uh, like, a really good villain. Like, I knew, uh, like, the fact that the, w the way the case was written... It made, I seriously thought he was the, he was the killer at the beginning. And then all the, all the facts were pointing at that one guy. And like, okay, then I guess he's just like a red herring. Uh, like maybe he had just weird, uh, weird philosophy, but then it turned out to be him. I thought it was really cool. What's your favorite case uh, so far in this game? Uh, probably the previous one. I thought uh, Turnabout Academy was really good. I have to say, I'm impressed with this game thus far. I honestly, I'll be, I'll be honest. I was not a big fan of the fourth game. So when it, when it came to this one, I had, uh, I, I had whole, I had, uh, I had good hopes for it, but I was really hoping it was a little bit better. His quote of ends justify the means has only been in my head all week, partly due to how some teachers only think of tests. Exactly. That's how, uh, that's how was uh, some of the, that's just like school systems just in general for the most part. And I think that was definitely part of the whole thing. So I'm also, uh, like I had a like a lung I had some uh, like sweatpants on because it was kind of a uh, colder uh, this morning, but now it's kind of getting stuffy in my uh, 
my uh, my room here. So I had to turn on the fan, switch pants, you know, that type of thing. I'm stripping. <laughs> Your boy's stripping. <laughs> I can't show it because Twitch has changed the rules. <laughs> Just wait, the fourth and fifth case are uh, fan favorites. Oh, good to know. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying uh, this this uh, game. I still think the third game, like the third game is still my favorite. But I'm, I'm, I don't know how to, uh, what to think about uh, this in the grand uh, scheme of things. I have to really, uh, like, that's definitely something I gotta take a look at. Like, kind of like ranking all the games how I feel. Have I ever watched Elements of Justice? I have not. What is that? All right, I'm back. Hey, welcome back. We were uh, talking about the previous case, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was asked uh, what we thought about uh, Aristotle means in the case, uh, case three. Oh, uh, is that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was. I mean, every time I'm like the first thing I'm gonna think of whenever I see that guy now is like, uh, 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 what is that? Philosopher on his way to take a dump on the floor <laughs> to interrupt government proceedings. Oh my gosh! Anything for the filibuster, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I miss what they read from the phone book. So, uh, Jordan asked about, uh, have you ever watched Elements of Justice? I had no clue about that. I forgot the name of it. Okay, story time. I have, I have seen it. And that's what got me into Ace Attorney to start with. Straight up, it was the My Little Pony X Ace Attorney crossover that got me into, uh, Ace Attorney. I, I'm sorry, why? There was a there was a fan created a My Little Pony X Phoenix Wright crossover. Straight up, it was it was so well written, it was well voice act. Everything about it was great. It was like a Ace Attorney case. I'm like, this shit is bomb. Let's I gotta check out more about Ace Attorney. Legit. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> Wow. Wait, they're creating more of it, Jordan? I thought it was just a one-off thing. Oh, do I go, do I watch that? <laughs> do you want to watch it with me? No. <laughs> Bro, I, I've never seen any of this My Little Pony stuff, but I'm like, am I, if, I, if I touch it, am I gonna end up going down a rabbit hole? No, actually, I don't. I am secure with I am secure enough with my masculinity that I don't think I'd get too roped into My Little Pony. I mean, I think that's why uh, so many people were uh, big into My Little Pony because they were like, "This is a really good show." Because it it truly is. It's one of those. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like Bluey nowadays. You know how a lot of people. I mean, what's up? Yeah, I was gonna say to be fair, as possible, I haven't seen the show. I mean, I could I could probably screen the show myself like i can find out hey is this something i would be okay with like letting my kid watch oh yeah i think that's uh like there were a lot of uh, wholesome stories of uh people on the internet uh watching the show with their uh, kids and that's how they kind of got into it and they're like oh, yo this nice. shit's actually pretty uh pretty fire it's from the same uh, creators of uh, foster's home for imaginary friends is that right yep that's neat so yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just it's just an interesting uh, interesting uh, fact. I uh, I watched uh, like the first uh, two seasons, kind of fell off in the middle of the third, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Neat. definitely something. But because I watched that, it got me into Ace Attorney, and now Ace Attorney is one of my favorite uh, series uh, series of uh, video game series. Ain't so, that funny how that works? Right? Everything's meant to happen for a reason, even if it doesn't make sense at the end of the time. But shall we figure out what happened after the uh, explosion? Uh, Yeah, Apollo didn't die. Let's find out how he did that. Please don't become a brony. I've already... That, that part of my life is already uh, behind me, my dude. In 
the middle of the space center bombing trial. We had another bombing incident. <clears throat> This one destroyed courtroom number four. Furthermore, Apollo suffered massive injuries from, from being there when the bomb went off. Try to say something about wanting to ninja defuse it. Unfortunately, Juniper Woods was fingered as the, co as the courtroom bomber. Athena and I knew she had to be innocent, so we took her case on. We managed to clear Miss Wood's name. But Apollo sustained further injuries when he was attacked by Ted Tonate. Apollo is a tough guy, but this is taking its toll on him. Yeah, poor guy. Being attacked by Ted Tonate like that on top of all of his other injuries. Apollo is resting at the... <clears throat> Apollo is resting at the nearby Hickfield Clinic. I just realized he's wearing his friend's coat. Is. Oh, poor Apollo. <laughs> he is suffering. I've had some experience with that place myself. What an awful turn of events. I never thought he'd land in a hospital of all places. You must miss him too, huh? Now that you don't have anybody to tease. Don't worry, he's young. He'll heal quickly, and he'll be back before you know it. It's been a while since I last saw Trucy look so down. We won the court case, yet nobody feels like se much like celebrating. <laughs> Uh, all right, enough of this, people! This is no time to be moping around. Now, dry those eyes, both of you! Uh, you're the one who's crying, Athena. Technicalities! Look, we have work to do! We have to take over! Um, take over what, exactly? Apollo Space Center case, of course. As no verdict was uh, been reached, there's still a chance. I agree with Athena. We should pick up. Uh, <clears throat> we should pick up Mr. Starbucks' defense. We have to avenge our fallen comrade, right, Daddy? Apollo hasn't exactly fallen. He's still alive, you know. Good. Now that that's settled, let's get going. Come on, we gotta run. Wait, right now? Now? You better not be running over, running the whole way. Don't you have a bike? <laughs> he he sold. He sold it for Trucy. <laughs> there she goes. I better catch up. <sighs> Can you take care of the office, Trucy? Sure thing, Daddy. Let's be careful out there. In the meantime, I'm going to bake some cookies and fill up my magic panties for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Please get a new act. <laughs> Trucy seems to be feeling a little better. Daddy, daddy, my magic uh, panties got a residency over in Vegas. Please tell me you're talking magic. Please tell me you're talking magic. <laughs> always count on Athena to perk everybody up with her enthusiasm. Oh, she's back! 
don't mind me, just forgot a few things. Wallet, phone, the documents, my bag. Sounds more like you forgot everything. You can always count on Athena for that too. All right, you two, let's be careful out there. December 19th, Detention Center. Visitor's room. So our client is one Solomon Starbuck. He's so famous, even I've heard of him. And I don't hear of anybody. <laughs> That's right. He's a super famous astronaut who works in the Cosmo Space Center. He was actually up in outer space seven years ago. You seem to know quite a bit about him. Now I'm all excited to meet the man. <sighs> wow. That was the longest sigh I've ever heard. He's back to his mopey ways. Well, that was short-lived. Apollo told me all about you. You're Phoenix right? Apollo's mentor, right? Yes, that's right. Mentor has a nice ring to it. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Starbuck. Mr. Wright and I have got you covered. Ah, and you're the new kid that Apollo told me about. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Huh? You mean other than your uh, other than at your trial? I don't think so. I guess so. My mistake. <sighs> My memory isn't what it used to be. My mind and body are kaput. Sin goes for my life. I mean, I'm so astronomically unlucky that I had a bomb go off in the middle of my trial. Trying to defend me would be like trying to enter a stratosphere without a spacecraft. Yikes. He's seriously got to stop depressing himself. Cheer up, Mr. Starbuck. Besides, that thing you said about entering the stratosphere, that just means we shine like shooting stars, right? Like shooting stars, huh? You know, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? After all, that's what we all, uh, that's what we were all put on the earth to do, right? To shine like stars. Guess I shouldn't mention the fact that shooting stars burn out in a flash. Yeah, just let them have this moment, Phoenix. Just, just let them have it. Oh yeah, here we go. Three, two, one. To the stratosphere and beyond! Yeah, I feel alive now. You can go ahead and ask me anything you want. Is that really all it takes? So you have no memory at all of the incident? <sighs> I'm so ashamed. My memory of the time is as black and clouded as a dark nebula. Still, it's strange that you don't remember a thing. Are you sure you didn't take one of those anti-anxiety pills like they said at the trial? You got it all wrong. I told him during the investigation too. I don't know anything about any drugs. I never took any medication, I swear. It is true I developed a fear of space because of what happened seven years ago. And I was taking medication secretly every now and then when my anxiety got bad. I think a fear of space is not something an astronaut could brag about, you know? Oh, it's the so-called Hat One Miracle? That must have been a terrifying experience. What's up with uh, Ace Attorney and just having... Uh... 
having like previous cases that happened seven to 10 years ago that have like two or three di uh, letters and a number. <laughs> they just call it the incident or the miracle. I, I guess it just helps writing. But I'm still an astronaut at heart. Come what, uh, come what may. I would never take drugs that might impede my performance just before a launch. That launch meant everything to me. That's, uh, that's more certain than the theory of relativity. So it's possible that someone drugged him then. Ooh. Yeah, someone drugged him so that he would be the one, he would be the loopy one that had to be dragged out by, uh, Mr. Uh, Clay. Okay. Seems like a completely different person now. This is the face of the astronaut, er, this is the face of the astronaut I know. But the tranquilizers were found in your system. <sighs> yeah, see, that that's the thing. But I don't know why. I'm done for. If you didn't take them, then maybe somebody slipped them to you? Exactly! That's what I thought! Must have been the real culprit! My medication was in my locker. Anyone could have gotten their hands on it. Some locker. <laughs> Fair point. Maybe the real uh, culprit also planted the detonator switch in your pocket. Yeah, that's gotta be it! I've been, fl I've been framed! I'll say, they even managed to plant your prints on the switch before flipping it. It's a real possibility. Do you remember anything else that might be relevant? Anything at all, no matter how small. Like about the murder weapon, for example? Hmm, that knife. I think it came from the outer space utility kit. Utility kits? Yeah, staff who worked on machinery a lot are given those special toolkits to use. All the technicians have them, so I doubt you could prove whose knife it is. Okay, all the techs have it. So anyone that's an employee can easily access that knife. Interesting. The hat won miracle. As I recall, your last trip into space was seven years ago, right? That's right. It was a pretty rough experience. During that mission, we had all kinds of problems with the craft. You did? What kind of problems? Power failure, oxygen leakage, busted radio, cracked windows, loose control column. Did Antrak create this uh, rocket? <laughs> or was it Bowie? Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly the dark age of the wall. <laughs> Bowie has the power to create the rocket ships now. <laughs> well, you know, they <laughs> you know they actually manufacture parts for making nukes. So you're not that far off, actually. <laughs> I know that I didn't know about nukes. I knew they were in uh, war uh, type stuff. I knew they have government. Tra yeah. uh, I know they have government yeah, uh, yeah. contracts because of my job. Yeah, they uh, they make a lot of weapons. And I, I'm, I'm fairly certain they manufacture parts that are made to build nukes. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I don't. I'm glad I'm, I don't deal with Raytheon or Lockheed or uh, Boeing. I, I deal with Amazon. I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different type of evil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I mean, Amazon's got those drones, so it's probably only a matter of time. They're they're shooting up satellites. That's as far as I could talk about it. I'm under NDA. Oh, dang. Yeah, they're they're firing up uh, satellites. It's really cool. Oh boy. The heat shield comes off, uh, uh, the she heat shield came off when we were entering the atmosphere. I thought I was a goner. 
but I managed to make it somehow with the popsicle and ice pack from the freezer. No wonder they dubbed it the Hat One Miracle. It's a miracle you made it back! Space is a boundless place. That's why it continues to capture people's imaginations. But the vastness of space shows us how insignificant we are in the scheme of things. The darkness just goes on and on forever and ever and ever without end. There was nobody else there. Nobody was going to come save me. I was all alone. All alone with nothing to listen to but the sound of my own breathing and heartbeat. I kept scrambling to make repairs, but I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. An experience like that would make anybody afraid to go up into space. Hey, Funky, thanks for stopping by. Hello. With the experience you had, weren't you dreading this mission? What? No way. Uh, of course not. Even now, I want to go up to space so bad, I can barely stand it. I want to shake off that Earth's gravity at the escape velocity and spin around weightless. Uh, weightless. Right. But you have to admit it's pretty heart harrowing. Weren't you even a tiny bit afraid? I was afraid. Of course I was. Still am. But space is man's final frontier. An unknown world. The cosmic truth is out there waiting for us somewhere. The cosmic truth, huh? I guess there are people looking for the truth in every walk of life. What would a, what cosmic truth would they be looking for? Like we know, we basically know what most of the, most of space is, right? Uh, we kind of we have a, a basic idea, but the we don't know what the like the middle of space. We know uh, we barely know our own solar system, really. Like I just read, a, I just read a, a, a article. We're uh, we should be getting uh, our first ever like drone footage, or like they sent out a satellite years ago that are finally making to a moon in, Sat in Saturn that has an atmosphere similar to ours. And they're, like, sometime this year, it's, it's supposed to, uh, like, kind of turn into, like, a quadcopter and, like, explore that moon. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, there's a lot to be, uh, to find there. We're trying to find a uh, planet that's just like Earth. Because it's, it's a miracle. It's it's a miracle. With Have you seen all the, like, different things that were needed to, like, allow Earth to be a, th uh, to be a thing? Just, like, yeah. a couple miles one way or another away from the sun or uh, towards the sun, and there'll be no life. And people want to tell me God's not real. <laughs> no matter how afraid I am... I sure, I, I'm sure I can manage. If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. One thing's for sure. Mr. Starbucks' passion for space is undeniably the real deal. Get this man to Mars. <laughs> right? He will colonize Mars by himself. The victim, Clay Tarrant. He was kind of like your protege, wasn't he? <clears throat> well, it wasn't a big exaggeration deal like Master and Apprentice or anything like that. But Clay did think of me as his mentor. The mentor and protege. What a combination they must have been. <sighs> With his encouragement... I knew I could get over my fear and go back into space. But now... Clay must have been a very encouraging, huh? 
Yeah, it's funny, really. Whenever I'd hear him shout, you're fine! I always got the feeling everything really was going to be fine. You're fine? Apollo says I'm fine, and you're fine all the time, too! And I feel encouraged, too, whenever I hear him shout it! Yeah, Clay and Apollo were best buds. They used to come visit the Space Center a lot, ever since they were high school kids. One day, out of the blue, Clay even told me he wanted to be my protege. Those two hung around the Space Center so much, they were like a part of the staff. One time during Zero G training, I started to panic a little bit. And the two of them took turns shouting, you're fine, over the radio. It was a simple thing, but it was, it was exactly what I needed to hear. So I'm fine and you're fine? We're like Apollo and Clay's secret phrases, huh? I could ask Apollo more about Clay and about their relationship. Speaking of Clay, how do you suppose he climbed down the ladder with you over his shoulder? <sighs> Sorry, but I can't even begin to imagine. But he actually did climb down that ladder, so a way has to exist. <sighs> From the freedom of space to the walls of a cell. But that prosecutor said the dark night sky isn't half bad through barred windows. You're fine! Solomon Soul Starbuck is fine! Everything's gonna be alright! Huh? And Athena Psyche. Uh, Athena Psych is fine! Come on, Mr. Wright! You too! Do I really have to? Phoenix Wright is fine! Phoenix, there is one man out there that will agree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you! F Phoenix Wright is fine! Again! Phoenix Wright is fine! Again! Phoenix Wright is fine! Again! Phoenix Wright is fine! Phoenix Wright is fine! Is that what they call it? That? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just the uh, Black Quills in his cell. Is that what they call it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you back into space yet, Mr. Starbuck. Believe in your own innocence and have faith in us. Apollo believed in you wholeheartedly, and that's good enough for me. I believe in you too. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. I'll put my faith in you. And I vow to make it back into space! All I need first is a not guilty verdict. It sure feels nice to reassure ourselves every now and then that we're all fine. I love that uh, little detail, uh, Flinch. He, uh, he uh, uh, brought up uh, would you change his color to match Athena's mood. I think we, we noticed that the first few cases. I think we did, yeah. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's get our investigation of the Space Center started. Pronto! Good idea. Let's go. Let's move out. I so want to be the alien in the cutout. <laughs> the little mushroom alien dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was wondering what kind of place this space center would be. It's almost like an amusement park of the future. Yeah. Did you know if they even let the public see the rockets up close? Oh, so check it out. Look at how brightly, brightly the GYAXA logo shines in the sunlight above the gateway. Is it, is 
is this supposed to be pronounced Gaiaxa? Oh, Gaiaxa. Yeah, probably. I really dig the stars and the rocket motif it's got going. Gaiaxa, huh? Isn't that the new name of the Federal Space R&D program? Yeah, but why the strange acronym? I mean, what is the guy supposed to stand for? Galaxy? If that were it, then the whole thing would be something like Galaxy Exploration Agency. Which, if you ask me, I'd abbreviate it to Gaxa. Or even Gaia. Hmm, I guess so. Oh, I know! Maybe the person who came up with the name just really likes the yell uh, the letter Y! This exchange is beginning to feel oddly like deja vu. Anyway, this place is more than just a research facility. It's also a tourist attraction! Now let's see. Tourist attraction? Don't make me laugh. It's a monument to the human race. Galactic Scooter, full speed ahead! <laughs> He's on the segue! I was just thinking, like, this place is kind of reminded me of the air, uh, like, what is it, the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> Oh my god. And the skate and the Segway just completed it. <laughs> we are in Washington DC right now. Yikes! Who's this gate uh, who's this geezer and what he wants? Look upon me and look upon me well. Behold the great power of science and er, of space science. Pardon me, but you are I am a man that has stolen the the Super Mario Brothers stars and put it on in my coat. I was about to say, he's got a Mario star in his coat. <laughs> my glorious name is Yuri Cosmos. I am the director of the Cosmos Space Center, the center of the cosmos. He does got a Waluigi mustache, and he looks like Drake from Pokemon Ruby <laughs> from Gen 3. <laughs> My gosh, it's a mishmash. Boss. <clears throat> Boss, that was pretty groan-inducing. Groan if this person is the, is the Space Center director, then that means... Aha! So you were one of the first to discover Clay's body, weren't you? And who was the first to find the victim? Actually, there were two of them. The Space Center director, Yuri Cosmos, and Detective Candace Arm. That is correct. Oh, that's you. <laughs> That is correct. I was honored to be the very first man in all the space and time to discover the body. But this talk of the incident, are you by chance the space police? And you know it. <laughs> you can take back the word space onto it, or you can't tack the word space onto just any old thing, you know? We're Mr. Starbucks lawyers. We're here to investigate his case. Oh, and we're Earth lawyers, by the way. Ah, I see. Yes, I've heard about you. In that case, by my esteemed privilege, I grant you permission to investigate. Thanks, we really didn't need your permission, but I'm glad, I'm glad to have it. I trust you are appropriately grateful. Now, go ahead. I'm at you. I can already tell he's going to be in nothing. He's going to be nothing but trouble. Don't let him hear you say that or we'll, or we'll see what trouble really is. 
Let's just be professional and ask him about when he found the body, okay? But boss, maybe I don't want to be professional. I mean, look at him. Ooh, He's I in a Segway. I can't. I don't have any counter argument for that, but I. What do I pay you for, all right? But boss, you don't pay me. <laughs> So, as director, what do you do here at the Space Center specifically? Defend peace across the galaxy and promote space development in this country. So you're a tour guide. Got it. No matter what obstacles stand in our way, we keep going for the sake of mankind. <laughs> uh, I believe the word specific or. Er, I believe I used the word specifically in my question. Attention all personnel. Take to your brake stations. Prepare for brake. Oh, I get it. You just wander around and tell people what to do in a self-important manner. So he is upper management. Perfect. Hey. <laughs> that is exactly right. Because I am an important man. My manner is important. Mr. Wright, this man doesn't get scar sarcasm. Well, there's bound to be some people like that here in the boundless in the boundlessness of space. What's that? You want to know what it is that makes me important specifically? Very well, I will tell you. I was the central figure of the Hat One project. Oh, there it is again. You may proceed to be appropriately impressed. Now, go ahead, have at it. I might be impressed if I knew what he did for it specifically. Could you tell us about what you know about the incidents from the other day? Hmm. I refuse. What? <laughs> Explaining is the job for color folk, not the director of the center of the cosmos. My testimony, which will go down in space history, will be heard in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, does that mean you'll be ta uh, taking the stand tomorrow? That is correct. I will be the most glorious witness in the history of mankind. He's definitely a space cadet. Let's just say that. He's something. I'm not sure if he really understands what being a witness is all about. Looks like Director Cosmo is the type that only talks about about what he wants to talk about. <clears throat> and let's try to ask him about the things he might be willing to open up about. The Hat One, or yeah, the Hat One was a rocket that was launched into space seven years ago, correct? And despite numerous problems, it somehow made its way back home? Hmm. I suppose it is part of my job to educate ignorant young folk like you. Very well. I will impart to you the complete story of the Hat One Project. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Hat One's noble mission was to collect samples from an asteroid. Oh, probably those asteroid uh, samples. Ooh. And Mr. Starbuck was the pilot for that flight. Even the Hat One reached its plan. Er, eventually the Hat One reached its planned orbit. From where it, from where it launched. The hope probe toward the asteroid belt. 
Why does it look like the moon from uh, Sonic Adventure? You know what I'm talking uh, about? Well, with that one was half blown up. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, and, like it looks like it has the super laser. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the space colony arc. Yeah, that's it. I thought it was on the moon itself, but I got those uh, mixed up. No, they Eggman blew up the moon. Yeah, he pissed on it and blew it up. From there, the Hope Probe began its long, lonely journey into the far reaches of space. Then after a terrifying struggle, the Hat One returned safely to Earth. That struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One Miracle occurred, right? Correct. And it truly was a miracle. Of course, they had just... They had just... Uh, <clears throat> of course, they just had to turn the ordeal into a movie. As for the probe... As for the Hope probe, it did eventually arrive safely at its destination. It obtained a few samples from the asteroid and returned to Earth, but a few days ago. So what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. It's been seven years. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Terrence's murder. Oh, you know what? It's oh. probably the probe return makes sense seven years later makes sense <laughs> regrettably we've had no time to inspect the samples due to everything that has occurred you know fair enough but this puts our space development program ahead of other countries by several years that's quite impressive I guess this guy isn't just a loudmouth bra uh, <laughs> braggart after all. <laughs> In the golden age of space development, our predecessors were successful in bringing a moon rock back. That is the greatest achievement in the history of this, spa of this space center. public fell in love with space and all of its glorious potential. A moon rock, huh? I remember that being big. Our endeavors with the moon rock live on in our... <clears throat> our endeavors with the moon rock live on in our work with those asteroid samples. I want to bestow new hopes and dreams for the future upon mankind once again. That is my mission as the man who stands at the center of the cosmos. I hear there's a lot of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say results are uh, could potentially have a huge impact on all of uh, civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. What? Bite your tongue. It's not for anything so base as money or politics. It's all for the brilliant future that awaits mankind. And all for my illustrious mission. With the recent budget cuts, my staff tells me finances are tight. But I won't hear it. Hmm. I guess even a space program has to watch its budget. By the way, you seem awfully knowledgeable about this kind of thing, Athena. <clears throat> huh? Oh, well, you know, I thought I'd better brush up for the case. Is that so? Well, I will be on my way. As you can see, I am a very busy and very important man. Galactic Scooter, fire up the main engine, max battle speed, and engage! We gotta chase off the squirrels! 
<laughs> the alien squirrels from Pluto. The space I don't have proof yet, but I just know it. The space squirrels are attacking. <laughs> that thing's surprisingly fast. I guess we better get going too. You bet. Let's make it so. He's just the Segway guy from Happy Wheels. <laughs> oh no. There, there's a seahorse. There's an alien seahorse and in the hookah lounge. It's like a, it's like a giant, it's a seahorse mixed with a giraffe mixed with a Loch Ness monster. This place is base, dude. <laughs> So this is where Mr. Terran was murdered. <coughs> yeah, this is the lounge. Let's see that diagram the police made again. Right now we're in the main building here on the right side, on the third floor. Clay and Mr. Starbuck fled it here from the launch pad one after the explosion. Can you imagine Clay's last memories? His last thing he saw on this mortal plane was that seahorse alien Loch Ness monster thing staring into his eyes. Huh. Poor Clay. Uh, you there! No attendance without express permission! We're Mr. Starbucks lawyers! We've come to investigate! Sorry, nobody gets in without permission. Not even the police superintendent. Can't have Detective Fulbright getting mad at me. Can you imagine Fulbright getting mad at you? Can you imagine that goober getting mad at you? I, I, I was like, uh, oh no, Detective, not Detective Fulbright. <laughs> oh no. Like, honestly, I think he's just going to throw a bit of a fit and then he's going to get over it. So, Detective Fulbright is here, huh? Yeah, he's in the launch pad one corridor. Go get clearance from him and then we'll talk. Leave it to me. I'm great at getting intel out of Detective Fulbright. Let's see, what trick should I use on him today? I don't know if I should be grateful or afraid. So, to get to launch pad quarter one, <clears throat> we just have to go through that door with the blue rocket on it, I think. Wait, a door. It looks and it looks awfully familiar. Good eye there, boss. This is the door Clay and Mr. Starbuck used on their escape from the launch pad. Ah, that explains it. The fingerprint system uh, has been deactivated, so I think we can pass through there. Now, come on, let's go. Even in space, safety first. You know what the weirdest thing is? This reminds me of uh, Denver International Airport. Really? Like straight up, there's a corridor in uh, DIA that looks just like this right here. I've been to uh, a few airports and a lot of them do have these uh, walking, uh, Walkways? Like little people movers, yeah. But there I, was a... I know there's like an there's an actual term for them, but it escapes me at the moment. I've always called them uh, people movers. But uh, there was legit, like, uh, there, like DIA, it's a big airport. So the... Uh, going through uh, customs or whatever, uh, the T TSA, is always a long-ass uh, wait. However... If you go through one of these hallways, there is a separate TSA uh, checkpoint that will get you through. Uh, like, so the 
it's it the airport's big. It's uh, split up into three uh, corridors. Uh, mm-hmm. th- if you go through this uh, walkway, it will get you straight to uh, corridor A, and you could just uh, you go in here, and there's no TSA line ever. So you go through this TSA line, spend no time uh, waiting in line, and then just w- uh, getting into the subway system and get you to uh, terminal B or C if you need to. Right, Super okay. cool. I know this is like no information anyone's going to ever need, but just remind me of it. <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, I want to. Was it the Houston airport or was it the Dallas airport that had that tram system? Uh, I think both of them have had it. Did both of them have it? I hmm. think so. I, Dallas. Okay, you know what? I Dal- oh, It was Dallas. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, I know Dallas has one because I remember specifically missing a flight in there one time. I did, too. I can't believe the fucking airport shuts down at 11 p.m. in Dallas fucking Texas. (laughs) If it was in, like, bumfuck nowhere um, Montana, yeah, sure, that makes sense. But in Dallas, Texas, I couldn't get back (laughs) into the building, and I was technically homeless for 12 hours. Have they heard this story before? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Have you guys heard the story of Zeke in the Dallas airport? I was there for it. <laughs> you were inside the airport because they locked the doors. Everyone in there was allowed to uh, stay. You were in, you were in like, relative comfort. Relative I was comfort. Stuck, I, mean, like, I was stuck in front of the like, TSA lines with no TSA agent. I was fucking homeless, dude. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I gotta hear this story. I had a I had a photo of my uh, setup because it was like I, I had like five hours. I had to uh, wait out there. It wasn't it wasn't technically uh, it wasn't technically half a half like twelve hours, but I was out there for like seven hours. They gave me a voucher for a uh, for a hotel flight, uh, for a hotel stay, but it took 45 minutes to get to the hotel, and I figured it's not worth uh, going there just to get four hours of sleep. So I just stayed outside the like kind uh, of the back the baggage claim area because I thought I could get I I thought I could get there, but no. Oh, that's right, no. I could have called an Uber because the the shuttle system closed down. <laughs> the oh. last shuttle cl- uh, happened at 10.30. I got there at 10.38. Oh. <laughs> and there was someone that was also going to the Springfield Airport. So I thought, oh, I'm, 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 I'm free. I'm cool. Because they were like, we're, we're go- they're like, they're going to Arkansas, you know. So they're oh, we, we, like, cool. I thought I was with my people. <laughs> And I found out that they were on a different, they were at, they were scheduled with a different uh, hotel. And the hotel driver looked at my ticket and like, I can't take you there. <laughs> oh, no. So I was stranded. <laughs> Yikes. I was st- stranded there. You know, what the, you know what the kicker was? What's that? I almost missed my flight out of uh, Dallas. You're kidding. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was at the terminal. I'm like, oh, thank God. They had, they overbooked the flight. No. They overbooked the flight. And because the fact that they rescheduled my flight, I had no guaranteed flight seat. So they pulled me aside. They said, okay, you and five other people, you just have to sit here and wait. We'll have to wait and see because there's like weight restrictions. I walk over there, and lo and behold, someone else showed up, and they had a child with them, like a legit baby. Oh. And they were telling the agent at the at the beginning, they were telling the agent that they had no, uh, they had no more formula. And I just heard that. I'm like, I'm not getting on this flight. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no way me, the 29 year old, I can stay another uh, five hours. The baby that has no formula. That that's that's the first one that gets on that flight, and I would not cry, I would not cry foul for that. I totally get that. Yeah, no, fair enough. But they let me and the mom. They let me, the mom, and the baby onto that flight, though. <laughs> I arrived at home at nine a.m. I had to clock in to work at twelve thirty. 
that same day oh. because my replacement could not replace me one additional day. <laughs> That's rough. Luckily, I was working from home that day and I didn't get shit done. <laughs> <laughs> I might have I might have like reviewed a few uh like few things in email and might have sent a PO or two, but I was I was cooked. <laughs> no, that ma that makes sense. Oh, but you know, it was it was frustrating, but now it's it's a funny mo memory. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shall we continue Phoenix right? <laughs> Let us continue. So this is it, huh? This is the corridor of the this is the corridor the two of them used in their escape. Yep, this is the only thing connecting Launchpad 1 with the main building. I see police tape down at the other end. Guess we won't be looking at the launch pad. After the explosion, this whole corridor must have filled with smoke. But the launch pad itself was probably a sea of flames. It must have been pretty scary for them. Now, where could Detective Fulbright be? Hey, I think that's him over there! Hmm, what should I do? Which path is the path of justice? He seems to be lost. That's funny. This quarter is a straight shot. Huh? Ah, oh, it's you lawyer people! Welcome to the Space Center! Enjoying a relaxing day off, are you? Here for a little rocket sightseeing? Well, maybe if it weren't blown up. <laughs> We're here to investigate the scene, same as you. Do you have any info to share? Oh, Mego uh, redeemed the Among Us, so I gotta say Among Us a few times. Among Us! Among Us. Boss, if you act, uh, act at all reluctant to give us information, we hit him with the whatever shall we do act. I'm sure he'll fall for it. Got it? Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? Info on the case, huh? All right, I'll gladly share some with you. Huh? What just happened? Detective, uh, detective and lawyers seeking truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you info bandits. I'm in a generous mood today. I don't know. There's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. Well, we need information, so let's run with it. If you say so. Detective Fulbright, could you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard, and we can't get in. Oh, whatever shall we do? That's an easy one. I'll let them know over there to let you in. Investigate to your heart's consent, uh, content. Take a week if you need it, a month even. Shall I have some snacks delivered? One of my men uh, makes a mean neck rub, uh, gives a mean neck rub. Uh, no, that's okay, but thanks. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. Detective Fulbright is acting, uh, acting sickly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. Do you think he, uh, he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case, it's making our lives way easier. You were here at the Space Center at the time of the incident, weren't you, Detective? That's right! I was here on a, a security assignment! Police are required to secure rocket launches now? I didn't know that. Um, yes! Well, you know us! To serve and protect! <laughs> the explosions occurred while we were here on duty, so I started leading the evac uh, evacuation. He's leaving out a lot of details, but okay. 
could you tell us more about what happened? Of course! A bomb went off on the second floor of the main building! Right after that, the one over in launch pad one also blew sky high! So I immediately instructed the visitors and the employees to evacuate to the shelter! The shelter? That's right! There's an evacuation shelter in the basement of the Space Center! It's there for accidents and emergencies and the like. So where were you when the first bomb went off? I was on duty on the fourth floor, which was quite the madhouse, I tell you. The elevators weren't working on account of the explosion. And the stairs of the second floor were destroyed, so we couldn't go that way. Then wasn't it impossible to get down to the basement shelter? Oh, that's easy. We flung people out. <laughs> we just yeeted them. <laughs> just... No, we lo lowered an emergency ladder from the fourth floor window and escaped that way. It was a folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable, but at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I left to take another look around for any other survivors. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal. But climbing down an emergency ladder kind of sounds fun. Thank you for the answers, Detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment! I have some more information to share with you. But don't tell Prosecutor Blackwill. Okay. Wow, and Prosecutor Blackwill usually has you on a short lease, too. Well, never mind that. <laughs> I thought you should know that there were there was a witness. Ooh, okay. Could you tell us of the uh could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing. The witness was the Space Center employee who was on the fourth floor. While she was climbing down, she looked through a window into the third floor lounge. So, she was looking into the crime scene from the outside. That's right! It was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Not that I know what she saw exactly yet, though. You don't? That's the most important thing to, of all. Ha 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 ha! Don't you worry! I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be somewhere around here in the Space Center. You might even run into her. A fourth floor, a fourth floor employee, huh? All right, thanks for the, thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. Gee, you sure are being cooperative, uh, Detective. A little too cooperative, even. Yes, well, actually, I, uh something you can't talk about? Yes, uh, something like that. Actually, uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Well, I'll be on my way now. What was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm going to get it out of him the next time I see him. Okay. Not so sure he'll talk about it, though. We'll have... Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the border lounge... Or, to the boarding lounge. That window looks like something out of freaking Dragon Tales. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you two! Detective Fulbright has granted you permission to investigate. He also said I should bring you snacks or give you a neck rub too if you'd like. 
Oh, uh, that's all right, but thank you for the offer. Well, time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now, let's see, where's that diagram again? So this, so this lounge is on the third floor of the main building. And according to Apollo, this is where he believes a third party killed his friend. Well, let's stop the recap and start looking for traces of the third person then. You read my mind, Athena. We'll make that our first priority. There's just one problem though, this room. It's just so big. Don't worry, we can use this to help us. A space Center pamphlet for tourists? Yep, picked it up at the entrance. The map inside should come in handy. Let's see. Yep, here it is, a map of the lounge. <clears throat> this is the door we went through to talk to Detective Fulbright. Oh yeah. That's the door with the fingerprint recognition lock. Well, I guess this map will make things a little easier. We started with no evidence and now we've got a, like a second page, don't we? Yes, we do. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, no more excuses. Let's track down the third person. Wait, there's just one more thing. What's that strange creature moving around outside the window? Oh, boss, it's just a holographic image. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Whew, that's a relief. <laughs> there should be a button somewhere in this room to turn the image on and off. That's what it says in the pamphlet anyway. The only reason you're so eager to start is so you can push that button, isn't it? And what's wrong with that? Let's just look for the button while we're looking for clues. All right, fine. Let's get investigating. There is something I want to take a look at. This has been what flashing. No matter how I look at it, all I can think is torture device. But I guess it's a training device for getting used to zero gravity. Uh-oh. Athena has an odd glint in her eye. Is she thinking about trying that thing out? I should try to stop her, but I'm afraid she'll just muscle me out. Or she'll just out-muscle me. Hey, Mr. Wright! Look at that up there! Some kind of fragment. Stuck in tight. Oh, so that's what the glint was all about. That color looks familiar. It's... I think it's part of the oxygen tank. I think you're right. But if that's here, it means Clay's tank ruptured after they arrived at the boarding lounge. Oh. So Prosecutor Blackwell's theory that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay down the ladder must be wrong. This proves that both the astronaut, astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. <laughs> Way to go, Apollo! At first glance, it looks like a peaceful landscape, but there's that certain, but then there's that creature. Didn't the Hope Probe go to some planet? Maybe this is what the surface looked like? I don't know. I think it would have made the news that they discovered a creature like that. It did make quite a bit of news though, when the probe came back. Yeah, but the Hope, but the hope Probe didn't even go to a planet. It went to an asteroid. That big rock, uh, that's a big rock. <clears throat> that's a big rock kind of thing. Even aliens can't live there. Uh, 
a window and it's right next to the holographic image too. I bet it's here to help people see the stark con uh, contrast between reality and virtual reality. Way off. It says emergency ventilation, you know, to clear smoke from a fire. See, it's pointing out the virtual insanity of reality. <laughs> okay, kid. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of this room. Well, let's check. Drum roll, please. Ta-da! The Space Center pamphlet! We're here at the place that says Boarding Lounge 1. Here are the three doors. Hmm, let's call them Lefty, Righty, and Downy. People usually say west, east, and south, in case you like, in case, er, <clears throat> people usually say west, east, and south in a case like this, you know? Details, details. Anyway, look at, the, uh, take a look at the west door. That door with the rocket icon leads to launch pad one. I know because it says here on the map, launch, uh, launch pad one corridor. So that's where we, so that's where we were with the evidence. Er, <clears throat> so that's where we were with the detective. It was filled with smoke after the explosion. Right, next up, the right hand side of the map or east in your world. That's the door with the satellite dish icon to signify communication, AKA the control room. Yep, it definitely says control room. Looks like it has another door on the opposite side. They communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from here. So it's the center of the space center, the space center center, if you will. Does everybody start to talk like Director Cosmos after they've been here a while? But if they, uh, if they, uh, uh, but it seems that they built a new command center on the sixth floor. That's what they use the Hat 2 mission. So this control room was empty at the time. I've always wanted to see the inside of a mission control room. And since we're here. I'd love to do that too, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to. They want to keep the curious kids like you out. So the door is protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director could go through. That much security, I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out. Or with that much security, I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. So apparently the lock is also hooked up to the backup generator in cases of emergencies. Can only be operated by the director. Backup power lets the f lets it function even when power goes out. Okay, what about that last door? This lower door. Oh, excuse me. I mean, south door. It leads to the elevators. People go up. Robots go down. Simple enough. This is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Yep, and of course, there are no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. The elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Well, that's about it for the three muscadors of the boarding lounge. Thanks. Understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. That's why I thought it, we'd better have a good grasp of where all the doors were. So this is where they discovered Clay. Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let's take a look at the photo. So, 
So he was stretched out like this and... Huh? What's that thing that looks like a thermos? That's the thing the prosecutor Blackwell mentioned when I was in court with Apollo. He said it contained asteroid samples. Oh, right. Director Cosmos mentioned something about that too, didn't he? They were brought back only five days ago by the probe that the H1, that the Hat 1 launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see it? Let's think about that after we solve the case, okay? Here's another amazing piece of equipment. Walk on the surface of the moon, it says. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Oh boy, I wanna try it. Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could do mid-air uh, mid somersaults. Still on Earth, remember? Besides, it's connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I could jump really, really high. There's a sign that, or there's a sign on the wall that very clearly says, don't jump too high. Then what good is this thing? Uh, didn't I say in the beginning, walk on the surface of the moon? <laughs> oh, it's a tra uh, trash can. Huh. This could What's be important. This? Trap door? It's a trash chute. A clean robot throws the garbage out from here. The robots do the cleaning? What a futuristic world we live in. Oh, that's right. I got myself a Roomba the other day. <laughs> no kidding. Yep. I still need to uh, get it all set up. I just hope they don't revolt like they do in the science fiction movies. Does yours connect to Wi-Fi? Uh... I don't know if it's connected to Wi-Fi. I, I know it's uh, connected. I think it, it works with an app, so I guess, uh, I guess so. Because I remember hearing somewhere that uh, the Roombas actually collect the data about the layout of your house. Which I thought was like, what? Why? That is creepy as hell. <laughs> I've heard that uh, Roombas do uh, kind of learn the layout. I never really thought about how, uh, where it stores it or anything like that. But it learns the layout so they can, like, like know it's... that you have a couch right there so you could, it can avoid it. It sends that data somewhere. So I thought, okay, that, that's just a little too creepy. I don't want one. No way. All the robots here are very nice. Actually, wasn't there one in Launchpad 1 Corridor? We could go say hi to it if you want. Oh, there's something in the vents. Someone vented. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take this cover off then. What's this? It looks like a metal metal jelly bean. It's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two to three millimeters in diameter. Oh, why is there a bullet? Let's see. That would make the caliber 10? 10, Cal 10 millimeter? Ooh. Caliber refers to the diameter of a gun's barrel, right? Yes, but I've never heard of a 10 caliber gun before. Gun expert, really? is that is that a real thing? Uh, yes, there's nine millimeter and there's also 10 millimeter. Is a 10 millimeter just uh, not as common? Um, more or less, yeah. I, I do see nine millimeter a bit more than 10 millimeter, though some people really do like 10 millimeter. Oh, okay. Plus the fact that this game was uh, created in Japan where guns are a little bit more harder to get. Right. So that makes Poor sense. Japan. I think uh, most uh, most guns are uh, by cops. I think it's probably a nine. Uh, nine. You know, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Did you know there's, like, a, a group of people in Japan that are, like, 
crazy about western style movies yes i've heard about that <laughs> i saw a video of one of them like he was showing off his shooting skills and he's better than me <laughs> <laughs> is he like in a like dressed up as a cowboy He's dressed up in the cowboy. He's firing the gun. He's pulling the handle. He's spinning it and everything. I'm like, I don't even have the cojones to spin the gun like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. It I'm, is sick. And at the same time, I'm just like, I'm just a little bit jealous. The funny, uh, funny thing is, uh, like, you know how there's people in America that are like weeaboos? There's the uh -huh. opposite of that in uh, Japan. There are people that exactly. really love American culture. It's like that Spider-Man pointing at each other meme. We a booze, uh, West a booze. <laughs> they should get together. They will be friends. <laughs> like legit, oh, that could be that, 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 that could be funny. That, it's, that, it's those two muscular arms uh, joining hands. Be now it's like uh, uh, Westerners obsessed with Japanese culture. Japanese obsessed with Western culture. <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh like. I, I, I find it kind of wholesome. They need to get together and just be friends. <laughs> I bet if you tried firing a bullet this small with a regular sized gun, it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must have been a really small gun. Uh, yep, just uh, oh, Jap uh, Japanese are like American weebs uh, when it comes to uh, being to being dedicated to Western culture. Oh, okay, good to know. I just thought of something, actually. What's up? I might have had it backwards, because it's probably not referring to, like, 9mm in the sense that I thought. If the bullet's, like, that small, it must have been, like... Okay, so you know how it's, like, uh, there's, like, 22 long rifle, which is really small? Uh, yes, I think so. I think what they're actually referring to is a bullet that's about half that size, which I believe that's a real thing. Oh, so we talk about like a uh, like an ankle uh, ankle gun? Yeah, kind of. I mean, technically a 22 is small enough to be a, an ankle gun. But yeah, like we're talking something like really, really small here. Like something that like it's your uh, secondary just in case type thing. Yeah, in a way. You know what? Now that we were talking about the Japanese uh, who like American uh, culture, I learned something in my uh, marketing class that I found pretty fascinating. Uh huh. Uh, Americans as, as a whole in the United States, Americans adore uh, French culture. Really? And the French absolutely despise Americans. So there's no disconnect. Uh, there's a disconnect right there. They're just jealous we own guns. Uh, on the other side of the thing, this is outside of, uh, like, the nor like, quote-unquote, this is the quote-unquote normies. I hate that term because it sounds so derogatory these days. But I'm, I'm talking, like, normal people. Uh, most Americans do not like Japanese people or Japanese culture. But the Japanese adore American culture. Huh. So we kind of, we're, we're the Paris to the Japanese America. <laughs> like Japanese adores us, but we do not care and vice versa. And then I think uh, he said something about Japan. Uh, Japan actually has, they created a new language, a new word in their uh, language of the absolute disappointment of going to France and finding out that is not like the fiction that they thought it was. <laughs> like they get they build it up in their head so much <laughs> I could be mistaken with this but I think they have a word dedicated to being like tourists that go to France and are a little let down that is not as uh, that is not as nice as they thought it would be well that's a thing I've, I've also <laughs> never heard anybody refer to uh what is it uh normie as derogatory I mean, you know how uh, like we're we're kind of on we're kind of on the internet, so there's everyone talks about like oh it's the like the normies got to it. Like if you're talking about like an anime or like a like a TV show or video game that mm -hmm. was a little bit more niche, but then it got widespread popularity. Uh huh. A lot of people will call it oh the normies got it. I don't think it's like I don't think that's technically wrong though because like a lot of terms like I, well a lot of things in general on the internet. Like they have a set meaning 
And then these normie type people catch on to it and then they meme the hell out of it and then eventually just transform the definition. True. I, I see mean, it happen like all the time. True. And I, I like, I'm not uh, like, I uh, like, I hear it so often as like a derogatory, just putting someone down like, oh, you're a normie. You don't know. Uh, like we're talking like Ace Attorney, for example, someone gets into Ace Attorney. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you're just a normie. You're not a real Ace Attorney fan. That's what I'm talking about. Like kind of gatekeeping type of way. That's okay, what I've heard. I've, actually, it. I've never actually witnessed a, a scenario like that. Oh, okay. I've never, I've never like, I've never seen the normie turn be, uh, used to like actually put someone down. Mm-hmm. I, I've only seen like the normie using the term as people who are actually like wrecking something. Ah, yeah, it's it's basically the same way. They they refer to normies as a derogatory because they're ruining the like the like the normal interaction with the with the hobby itself. Mm-hmm. So like for example, if, if uh, someone were to uh, start getting guns and then just start like wrecking everything, they just start like they're not using gun safety whatsoever and then they're just yeah. blaming the hobby itself. You would say they're ruining it. They're the normies are ruining it. Uh, well, to, to be fair, like with, if it were a gun, I'd use something a word a lot harsher than normie. Right, but I just gra- I just grabbed the first one I could think of for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I I get what you mean. I get what you mean. But uh, yeah, that's what uh, that's what I mean. I mean normie as like the more like general term. That, yeah, that's yeah, what I meant. Because yeah. okay. if I if I tell the internet that Americans do not uh, do not care about Japan, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Have you seen the weeaboos? <laughs> it's like yeah, but not everyone is always online like us. <laughs> it's like, bro, have you seen Jujutsu Kaisen? <laughs> I gotta I, watch that show. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean, we're at the bottom left on the south door side of the room, according to this map. That's pretty far away from where Claire's body was. Maybe the police didn't think to look here? Yeah. Leave it to Detective Fulbright to accidentally hand us just the card we need. One of the main reasons I want to go to Japan is check out the Pokemon Center. I never had a chance to check out the Pokemon Center while I was in Japan. Uh, but this we were... Me, there's a Pokemon Center? Yeah, there's a Pokemon Center. There's a... You know how uh, in uh, New York there's a uh, Nintendo store? Uh-huh. It got it's, vandalized in 2020, didn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Right. Okay. But uh in Japan there are there's a uh there's a store just like that but for Pokémon. Hmm. Interesting. And apparently there's other stores out there, but Japan is like the big one. Never uh, never went to that store. However, we went to the One Piece store. There was a store dedicated to One Piece at Tokyo Tower. That's funny. And we, we got to go there because my brother was a uh, One Piece fan. Gotcha. It, it, that actually reminds me. I remember, like, hearing a while ago that I think every... I could be wrong about this. I might be remembering wrong, but I remember hearing somewhere that it's like one in ten people in Japan read One Piece. Uh, doesn't does this surprise me. It's It's big. Westerns and Pirates. I mean, it is, um, yep. yeah, pirates are Western. That's, uh, like the Caribbeans. Well, that makes sense, I guess. Is there anything else? No, doesn't look like it. There's that sign. Let's check out the hookahs. That's some pretty futuristic looking furniture over there. According to this pamphlet, those are no ordinary chairs. They're like amusement park teacup rides. You can power them yourself, it says. If you spin the table, your chair spins too. Why would anybody want to have something like that here? It's for astronauts who are having trouble with with the device on the ceiling. No vertical vertical spins. It says it's a train device that's easy on the eyes and on the body. 
Can a person really call themselves an astronaut if they can't handle zero G? I mean, maybe a beginning astronaut. Oh, what is this? These are apparently oxygen capsules. Capsules. They're for recovering after a training session. I wonder if they could change your voice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Huh? I didn't do a thing. It didn't do a thing. Uh, it's not helium, Athena. It's oxygen. Oh, a mirror! How thoughtful of them to put one here! Thoughtful? So the ladies can fix their makeup! One's appearance is just as important as uh, in space as it is in, on Earth, you know. You never know what uh, when you're going to run into some other life forms, after all. I doubt anybody who thinks like that would ever become an astronaut in the first place. <laughs> Athena's looking to riz up some aliens. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, champ. There's some kind of panel with two buttons on it here. <clears throat> Just push it! There, that's the invariable principle of buttons! There's such a thing as buttons left... Er, there are such things as buttons left unpushed. Hey! The giant holographic image disappeared! Yeah. So that side of the wall seems kind of barren without it now. Still, let's see if we can't find anything new with the image off. Oh, ho, ho. well, what do you know? Hey, Mr. Wright, take a look at this. Looks like a bullet hole. Great find, Athena. It's pretty big. Whoever fired the shot must have been using a pretty large gun think so? Based on my experience, I'd say this was fired from a regular pistol. Well, whatever size it was, someone fired a gun in here, right? Apparently. This is an important fact. Do you see the bullet around here somewhere? No, the police might have taken it, though. So we got a bullet and a bullet hole. Let's ask, uh, let's ask Detective Fulbright about this bullet hole later. Put the holographic image off. The screen is completely black, which for some reason makes me think of losing an argument to Prosecutor Blackwell in court. But at least he's got my brain revved up. I'll come up with my best ideas. I come up with my best ideas at times like these. They weren't joking. There is a lot of stuff to look at. I wonder what this big knob is for. It looks like a knob, at, uh, knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I think that's where the similarities end. I mean, it's behind a, I mean, it's behind a glass pan. What kind of stove would require knob security like this? Well, the knob is straight up and down. So if it was for a stove, the burner would be off. Right, if it were for a stove. Still, I wonder what it's really for. Something turned on by a knob that is not a stove? Hmm. How about a rocket engine? If you had to start the engine here, the rocket would take off before you could get in. Then I guess we, uh, I guess all we can say for now is that it's a mystery knob. So this is the fingerprint recognition device. I guess you could, I guess you put your hand <clears throat> I guess you put your hand on this hand mark. 
Well, I guess we can, when you can try now to line my hand up with the outline. Don't Athena, that thing's related to the case. Get your prints all over that, and the next thing you know, you'll be named the suspect. Well, how can you be so cruel to a little girl like me? <laughs> I'm not buying those tears, Missy. Let's see. The story is... Where's that pamphlet? Here we are. It's the door to the corridor that leads to launch pad one. <clears throat> we went through it earlier when we went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be designed or, oh, disengage. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They say the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. This thing besides the door. This must be the fingerprint recognition device. Which reminds me, I think Prosecutor Blackquill talked about it in the trial. The notion of a third party in the launch pad one is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge. One must pass through the door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with the clearance to do so. And does this mean that the bomber's prints were verified by the system? The number of authorized personnel was supposedly was supposed to be really small. One law, fingerprint powder. I brought it just in case something like this came up. I found it at the office. I bet I've been just itching to get a chance to use it. Wow, way to think ahead. Now let's dust the fingerprint rec er now. Let's dust the fingerprint recognition device and see what we can find. You got it. Now to sprinkle some here and a little over there and foof. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we got something. Aw, it's only a single set of prints. Uh, isn't that a good thing? Sure wish we could figure out whose prints these are. We got some prints. Although, I doubt we'll be so lucky as to get the culprit's prints on the first try. Well, I'm willing to bet that Detective Fulbright has some fingerprint data. Right. And there's some security footage of this door, too. Yes, here it is. It came on the court the other day. I wish we could see the part of the footage just after this bit. Oh, because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let's, uh, let's ask the detective. With the mood he's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can... <clears throat> Let's go see if we can find him once again when we're done with this room. Welcome to the Space Center, guests. Welcome. Yikes! What in the world? My name is Ponko. P-O-N-C-O, Ponko! Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you looking around? Choose one. I will guide you. It's a robot? I am not a robot. I am Ponko. Psychological observation and navigation companion. P-O-N-C-O, -O, Ponko. Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. <laughs> oh, Ponko, I missed you. Huh? Do you know this thing, Athena? 
Oh, uh, she, uh, showed us around the last time when I came here with Apollo. Oh, you're such a good girl, Ponko. That's a good girl. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy. So very happy. Wow, a guide robot. That's pretty cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Nice to meet you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Huh? Ouch. That hurt. <laughs> Oh, she has a register. Uh, she has to register people as she meets for the first time. Please register him, Ponko. Certainly. Commencing guest registration. Please tell me your name and nickname is fine too. His name is Phoenix. A bit overly familiar, but I'll allow it. Phoenix, please let me get a good look at your face. Oh, uh, sure. Registering. Facial recognition sequence complete. We are now officially friends. Nice to meet you, Phoenix. Huh, this robot is pretty cute. You made a friend, boss. Isn't it great? Phoenix, Athena, allow me to guide you. Right this way. Oh, goody! Let's go, boss! Go where? The fortune, uh, the... <laughs> okay, Space Museum, let's go! Oh, wow! What is this place? Is, is that rocket real? Welcome, welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day on the of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Learn about the history of our nation's space development and the Hat One project. The rocket is just a replica, but it's the same size as the real one. The Space Museum. Oh, here it is on the map. Okay. So it's on the exact opposite side of the main building from launch pad one. Okay. Ask me anything, anything I will explain. This is quite the place. I can't believe we get to see a rocket this close up. This is a replica of the Hat 1 that was launched seven years ago. It's exactly like the real Hat 1, inside and out. Its little brother, the Hat 2, was supposed to launch the other day. I wonder if Punko knows why the launch was canceled. Over there is the exhibit about the launch seven years ago. Check it out, check it out. Spacesuits, photos, newspaper articles. I'd like to come here again on a day off. Hey, what's this photo of? Phoenix, that's the staff of the Hat One Project. The Hat One Project, okay. Okay, so all three of the men we've met, the two women, I don't think we've met either of them yet. No, we have not. Oh, there's Mr. Starbu or Starbuck. He looks so young and so different. Oh, and that's, that's. What is it, Athena? Is something wrong? Oh, nothing. I just thought Mr. Starbucks looked really young too, that's all. Well, it was seven years ago after all, so the young guy standing next to Mr. Starbuck is Clay Terran, the victim. 
so they were mentor and protege even way back then. And he's even got one of the staff jackets. He looks just like a regular staff member. No, Clay was still a student then. He just borrow, uh, borrowed one of Solomon's old jackets. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Clay would still would would have still been in high school seven years ago. Everybody looks so happy. The space museum is great. What fantastic exhibits! I love museums, dude. They're awesome. This area used to be Launch Pad 2. That's why the only entrance is on the third floor. Wouldn't it be better if they just made a new ground floor entrance instead? There was talks of it, but they had to scrap the plans because of budget cuts. Budget cuts, budget cuts. We need more money, money. Who would record that kind of information into a guide robot? While it was in space, the Hat One launched a probe called Hope. The Hope probe could not collected some samples from an asteroid and returned five days ago. That's what Director Cosmo said too. He told us it came back the day before Clay was killed. And here it is, the Hope Space Probe. I think I've seen this logo somewhere before. It looks like Space Mountain. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the capsule that was carrying, that the victim was carrying. I think I had, I, or I think it had the same logo. I think it can be seen in the photo attached to the autopsy report. Maybe she'll give me some more info if I show it to her. The way the Space Center launch pad is set up is really cool. Would you like me to tell you about it? Would you? The setup of the launch pad? Go gentle on my spiky haired mind. I wanna know, I wanna know. Phoenix wants to know too. Gee, great. Now Athena's got a case of ponchoitis. Hooray! I will tell you then. The rocket, the rocket is built right inside the launch pad structure. When the rocket is complete, it moves along with the launch pad over the rails. Oh, that's pretty cool. And brought into position at the launch site. Oh. Brings in a brand new emotion. Hmm. So the okay, this is about to this is about to break our minds here. <laughs> I, I have a feeling this ought to be interesting. Isn't it cool? Isn't it? We used to have a big budget, so that's how we could build it all. Very cool. A grand setup that suits an important place like the Space Center. I guess everybody is hoping for a bigger budget next year. Myself included. I'm guessing the whole thing is operating from the control room, huh? That it is, but it can only be operated from the new command. Oh no, it can also be operated from the new command center too. Either way, the safety lock in the boarding lounge has to be uh, has has to first be disengaged. I guess before a big move like that, or I guess before a big move like that can be carried out, there are all kinds of procedures. I would love to see the launch pad be moved. What's the next one scheduled for? Searching data. All future plans have been put on hold. Because of the bombing and the murder, I bet. Er, because of the bombing and the murder, I bet. Which is perfectly understandable. 
They kind of, it's gonna be like kind of like uh, Ding Rampa too. I have a feeling. Oh, fun. Well, when was the last time it was moved? Searching data. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That answer isn't in my a answer database. I guess Ponko can only answer certain questions. Let's insert that DVD into the robot. <laughs> Ponko, do you recognize the capsule here in the top right? Checking registered data. Ah, I know, I know. It's the Hope capsule. Uh, it was carried inside the Hope prob uh, probe. It contained the asteroid samples, right? Yes, it was designed to store the samples gathered by the Hope probe. It's been stored in the safe in Launch Pad 1 ever since it returned to Earth. It must not be removed! It must not be removed! Don't worry, Ponko. The people in charge already know what happened. They do? They do? I must ask them later. So the capsule was being kept in Launch Pad 1, huh? Maybe Clay was trying to carry it to safety after the explosion. The space and the space center staff must have been really excited to finally get the capsule back. It was a pity this incident occurred before they had a chance to check the contents. Well, the police took it as evidence, so they'll have to wait a little longer. Well, we certainly learned a lot about the Space Museum. Thank you, Ponko. You explained everything very well. I love to explain. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You two are like old friends. It's hard to believe you just met recently. <laughs> it's because Ponko is so friendly. Well. What should we investigate next? Let's go find Detective Fulbright. We have things to ask him about. Let's see, security footage and the fingerprint data, was it? Okay then, let's go back to the launch pad one corridor. Bye Ponko, see you later. Come again, come again, and don't forget to visit the gift shop. Poor Ponko. What a uh, Dickinson. Dickinson? Dickinson? I have no idea. What a Dickinson life we are. We are all forced to lead. All right, let's find Fulbright. Word. That robot's still just cleaning that one spot. Eh. That, that damn explosion. Uh, Dickens sign, a, wor a world like Dickens works. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Hmm, what should I do? Which path is the path of justice? There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost, even though it's a straight corridor. Let's hope he's still in a cooperative mood as well, then. If he doesn't cooperate, then I'll just have to use my powers on him. You mean that lady in distress bit? We got some stuff to talk to you about. Where's the fingerprints? Uh, the good question. <laughs> well, let's present the bullet, I guess. Something for the lost and found? I'll be sure to take care of it. 
No, no, no. This is an important piece of evidence. I guess we'll just present things until we find what we need. This isn't working. Okay, let's see. Oh, the security camera footage. Detective, about the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge cam about boarding lounge one camera. Oh, that footage? Go ahead and ask me anything you like about it. Is there any way I could see a little more of the part just after this? Easy as pie. I'd be glad to show you. Here we go. <laughs> huh? Screaming plank. Oh, the bullet. Oh. Oh, that's why. Yes, apparently the after effects of the explosion uh, damaged the wires. So there's no footage after this point. <laughs> Why didn't you just say so from the beginning? Okay, let's take a look. What else does it say? Finally talk to the witness of the crime, ask Fulbright to run the prints. Oh my gosh, come on. Oh, here we go. We just had to talk to him about stuff. We found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. You did? Our team found that too. It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. Detective Arm? That's right! A warning shot for the defendant! Was it really such a high threat situation that she needed to do that? I'm afraid I don't know the details. What with Detective Arm gone and all. But I thought there were two people who had discovered the crime scene together. We already know Detective Detector Cosmos will testify. <clears throat> So tomorrow will be about what he knows. Hey, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as a main course. I hope it goes down easy. Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some prints we found in the bo uh, boarding lounge. Ah, uh, yes, I just happen to have a compiled the print data on everyone related to this case. He has every single information. We can ask him about the winning lotto ticket numbers. He's like, oh yeah, I have them right here. <laughs> I even have next week's, don't ask me how. <laughs> I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours, consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Yeah, what is up with uh, Fulbright? He's just on top of things, I guess. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. I sure took a while, though. Oh, he got Apollo's and my prints. He even got prints for all the robots. How? It's just a, like a black, just box. <laughs> I guess when Blackwell is said to dig deep, Fulbright didn't bother to ask how deep. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Clay's uh, fingerprints are here too. I personally removed his glove during the investigation. 
We well, had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity after all. I still can't believe you took off his glove to get his fingerprints. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for thinking they were important for this case. There's a lot of doors that require fingerprint verification in the lounge. So, depending on whose prints we find, it could completely change the tide of both sides. Makes sense. After all, the corp the culprit's prints did get get them <clears throat> After all, the culprit's prints did get them past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, it takes this picture. It might come in handy. Isn't this just a photo of the launch pad one door? Yep, but Prosecutor Blackwell seems very interested in it in some reason. Huh? What's so important about this door? Beats me, but boy, could you see the gears in his head go in a hyperdrive at it. Sounds like this is going to be a major point of con contention tomorrow. Hey, don't forget about the print comparison, boss. Right. Detective Fulbright, do you think you could run the test for us right now? You just leave it to me! In justice we trust! Okay, here we go. Well, it looks like it was Mr. Starbuck who opened that security door. He must have opened it when they went to go board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hope and hopes and dreams for this space adventure right then. Something definitely seems to be up with you, detective. You're usually co you're unusually cooperative. Well, uh, I just figure if we work together, we'll get much closer to justice, right? But it seems you're, uh, it seems like something's really been bothering you. You don't have to, you don't have some alternative motives, do you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do anything like that. Cyclox. Eh. been a while but those are definitely cyclops i forgot that we had the little uh, thing the magatama <laughs> hmm did you uh, did you just mouth sight is there something i should be psyched about no no psych lock it's a system of locks on the secret in a person's heart i can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this magatama Magatama, the psycho lock time, baby. Presenting evidence can break those locks. The psycho locks. Yeah, I remember Edgeworth calling them psycho locks. And revealing any secrets they're hiding. If it weren't for the DLC. Oh, is that why everyone's saying to play the DLC case? So we remember we had the Magatama. The DLC case also kind of puts a little, uh, like, when does everything st uh, start? Puts a little bit more into the timeline. <laughs> we got, like, this is, like, pretty much Pulp Fiction, Ace Attorney Edition. Oh, boy. Mr. Wright, how much did they build, um, bilk you uh, out for that piece of rock? If you've been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. I'm more than capable of representing myself. Thank you very much. Isn't it some kind of fraud? It really works. Or, it isn't some kind of fraud. It really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. But I guess seeing is believing. Allow me to show you. Let's see. Oh, fair enough. Take that! Sorry, I figured it since it was like a little tutorial thing. That's fine. 
why you're being cooperative. I think you're hiding something, detective. So why don't you just tell us about it? Phoenix Wright's becoming a lockpicking lawyer now. Hmm, what to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is really in agony. I bet this is the issue he's so torn up over. Life, love, justice. Imagine can, if it was love. Can I uh, mention a funny line? Sure. Is it is it in, uh, related to love? I really understand what you're... I really understand what's bothering you, detective. I truly do. Something happened that goes against your principles. Isn't that right? I should have uh, I should have just uh, chose uh, love. Apparently love had a funny uh, line in it. Damn it. Aw, oh, darn. Uh, no! I don't know what you're talking about! Until the explosion c occurred! Everything was just fine! Is that a fact? Yep, peaceful as peaceful can be! Everyone whistling a happy tune as they did their job! <laughs> You never saw a more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. I don't think the guard detail was as relaxed as you claim as long as this exists. Take that! Hmm, there must be something wrong with the, my sunglasses today. You aren't presenting uh, that to me as evidence, are you? Is he making fun of me? It's just as I said. Until the explosion occurred, everything was just fine. Oh, the bullet hole. Take that! Guess not. Maybe the bullet itself? He didn't know that existed until like. Take that! I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so with that one. I'm just thinking, why mm. would they have their guns? Uh... He was the one who conducted <gasps> the evacuation. Re uh, evacuation riot! Riot! You? Police were immediate. Uh, were there immediately? Before the explosions, what was supposed to happen here? Er, before the explosions, what was supposed to happen here was a rocket launch. And yet security was so tight, they even brought in a special task force. I hardly describe that as relaxed guard detail. Now, hold on just one moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called in on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that's the truth. But I say it's very strange that this person would be part of that detail from the outset. Take that! Detective Arms specialized in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on hand means that you people knew there was a possibility that a bombing would occur. Um, you got me, Mr. Right! Bye bye, Psycho Locks. I want chicken nuggies. <laughs> yeah, maybe when you earn them. All right, I concede. You win. It's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about a potential bombing. But the plan to launch went ahead in spite of the threats. But why? Uh, what uh, what were they planning to do if someone got hurt or killed? Yeah, I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? 
How was the warning delivered? By phone and direct uh, directly to Director Cosmos. But the police department instructed everyone to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to keep quiet about. No wonder you were so upset. But it's not just that, only that. It's been, uh, I've been distraught about Prosecutor Blackquill as well. Prosecutor Blackquill? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you have a lot of difficulties. That's not it. It's a question of justice. I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. The reason he's still prosecuting? Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything you know. Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are rules but things to be broken, right? That's not what you say to the police officer, Athena. <laughs> Don't say that to the cops. <laughs> uh. Well, to tell you the truth, having a pris prisoner acting as a prosecutor is highly irregular. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> I think we guessed that much. Especially the fact that he's breaking chains as if they were like, like those paper, uh, paper mache chains, you know? <laughs> so why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering about it. So you weren't told why either, huh? No, I guess the orders came uh, came from pretty high up the ladder. Yeah, would have to have. But Prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been uh, on for the Phantom of Seven years past continues even still. Seven years past. A phantom, huh? And not a and not one of the friendly variant either, I guess. Haunted for seven years. This phantom of seven years past. Any idea who or what he's talking about? Not a clue, but he seems to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. Wait a minute. He thinks they, they may be connected to this case? Wait, didn't Apollo say that at the beginning? Like there's a phantom uh, like lurking in the shadows? I don't remember. Yep. Hardly this wants to say Yes, he did, but I'm not sure. Yep, this case has way too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. In both incidents, a threat was issued via telephone. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks this incident is the work of the Phantom? Well, that's not uh, the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago. That's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty of murder. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of the law. So you could see how this Phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why he'd think that. This incident and the Phantom, not to mention Blackwell's past. It's almost inconceivable that they would come to head here. Um, this might sound crazy, but... Prosecutor Blackwell can't possibly believe Mr. Starbuck is the Phantom person, right? I mean, he was acting kind of strange during last trial and all. Prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence.
Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Hmm? <sighs> No, I doubt he thinks Mr. Starbuck is his phantom. But I do get the feeling that he thinks the defendant has ties to him. Uh, ties to them. Which is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Star uh, Starbuck. And that's not real justice. I've always trusted in Prosecutor Blackwell's judgment until now. But this time, I'm just so over uh, over about it all. If he's lost his ability to think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false uh, conviction. I've never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. This must be why he's been so cooperative. He wants to avoid the false uh, co uh, conviction. Hmm. Don't worry. That's exactly what we defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Prosecutor Blackquill, but I'm going to be rooting for your team this time. But don't tell him that. You have to promise me you won't. Detective Fulbright? I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to reform, uh, reform Prosecutor Blackwell and make sure uh, make him a valued member of society again. So I can't just sit uh, sit by and watch him give in to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. You are the only ones who can stop him in court. You really care and want what's best for him, for Prosecutor Blackwell, don't you, Detective? Leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict either. I was hoping you would say that. I'm really grateful to, uh, to the two of you. To show my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the Space Center entrance a little while ago. But really? Let's go find her, Mr. Wright. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better, uh, uh, better now that I was able to get that off my chest. I'm gonna work extra hard to find the perfect piece of evidence for you. Injustice and in trust on three. One, two, three. Injustice, Injustice we trust. Injustice we trust. Okay, later. There he goes. Wait. We're supposed to say injustice we trust back there, too? <laughs> Let's go see that witness now. All right. The Space Center entrance. Er, all right. The Space Center entrance it is. Witness must be around here somewhere. Hello, hello. Oh, this is a male. This is a new one here. I'll, I'll take this one for you. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Don't tell me we witness. Don't tell me the witness is this is a robot. Hello. Come over here. Hello, hello. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you... Uh, I am Klonko. Is that right, Klonko? Yeah, I think so. I don't know why, but this robot's kind of freaking me out. Hey, you're not supposed to be... Or is that... That's oh, probably that the witness. The... Hey, you're not supposed to be wandering around. I think it might be the old man. Or... No, that's a woman. Again? <laughs> I've had it with you, hunk of junk. Got. I'm outside. Am I wandering? When did this? Ha when did that happen? 
Okay, welcome back, hunk of junk. You don't know how close you came. If you didn't snap out of it, I was going to put you on the curb on trash today. Nothing works better than a 42.5 degree karate chop. That's pretty specific. Excuse me, but are you the are you the one who witnessed the murder? Oh, and I'm Phoenix Wright, the leading attorney for the case. How do you do? <laughs> Big shot lawyer, huh? I'm Aura Blackwell. Oh. We got another Blackwell here, Zeke. Oh. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Oh, she's not in here yet. She might be now, now that her name's revealed. Oh, guess not. I'm a research... Oh. Oh, whoop. I'm a research develop... I'm a researcher developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. Blackwell? Could she be... And this good-for-nothing robot is named Hunk of Junk. My name isn't Hunk of Junk. My name is Clonko. That's mean, Miss Aura. Quit complaining. Your model number is Punko 2. Ah, but Miss Aura, everyone calls me Clonko. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. Glad that robot's not alive, or else this would be a crime. Quit your squawking already. My gosh, when a boomer's uh, TV won't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are you doing? No, no. <laughs> there. I bet you won't be talking back now. Ah. Uh, I will obey completely. Yikes! I better watch what wires I crossed with this one. Thirty-seven. How old is Simon again? Twenty-eight. So they're nine years apart. Mm-hmm. She must be the younger, or I mean, the older sibling. Yeah, most likely. Your last name. Your last name is Blackquill? Do you have a relative in the legal profession? You are correct. Simon Blackquill, who used to be a prosecutor, is... Shut up! I only speak when I order you to speak. Yes, ma'am. Simon is my little brother. You know him? Yes, we met him in court a few times. Right, Athena? Your brother's a whack job. Yeah. Oh, tell me something I don't know, darling. What a dull creature. Has this switch been turned off? So I guess uh, craziness just runs in their family. Nice. <laughs> what do you mean, nice? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Athena being shy? This is new. Oh yeah, I heard he was prosecuting again, despite being a prisoner. Why doesn't he just stick to solving disputes among inmates in prison, right? Hmm. Hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? Yeah, Miss Aura, that hurts. I'm asking you a question. Why don't you answer me, useless hunk of junk? But Miss Aura, you told me only to speak when you order me to speak. I told you. Oh my God! <laughs> poor robot. Poor Cl uh, Clonko. I told you never to talk back to me. You're worth more a scrap. 
Robot abuse. Hawk attacks. Blackwell family lives may sure be interesting. And by that, I mean these people are all psychopaths. Well, do you have any other questions? Wait, of course you do. You're a lawyer. It's not like I'm... Si it's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get this over with. <laughs> Holy smokes. So you're the person who witnessed the incident? That's right. I was on the fourth floor of the main building. In the robotics lab. The explosion disabled the elevator. So I lowered my emergency ladder to the detect. Uh, so I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading. What? Like the detective oh. leading the ev evacuation. Sorry, I just had a. Hey, I I, I get circuit. it. <laughs> I totally get it. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why couldn't they have used ladders in the other rooms? It must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best just to humor her here. Then as I passed by on my on the <clears throat> then as I passed by the third floor boarding lounge one window on my way on my way down, I saw the crime as it happened. And that's about it. So you saw the crime as it happened, and that's about it. I see. Wait, what? You saw the crime being committed? This is no time to just nod and repeat. So you saw into the third floor lounge. Very scene of the crime. That's right. There's a small window on the right-hand side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. The room is pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a lighter in their left hand. Interesting. And a knife in their right. That must have been the culprit! Did you see who the person was? Of course not. The power was out on that floor. Then, er, oh, the power was out on that floor then. And there was only that tiny window. I see. But you did witness the moment of the murder? Yes, I saw the figure with their lighter raise and, er, Yes, I saw the figure with their lighter raise, their knife, and... It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you, it was pitch black in there. Although... I did notice that the lighter the person had in their left hand had a pretty ornament on it. it. Looked like a planet. It was blue, like a little Earth emblem. They had good taste in knickknacks, anyway. An Earth emblem on the lighter. I rem better remember that. Alrighty. Thanks for your statement. We'll definitely prove Miss, Mr. Starbuck, Mr. Starbucks' innocence with it. <laughs> You're right. I won't hold. Er. <laughs> yeah, right. I won't hold my breath. Pardon me. Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry. I just detest lawyers. That's all. What don't you like about lawyers? Put two two together, Phoenix. 
it's probably connected to that case seven years ago that got uh, Blackwell uh, convicted. Possibly. It probably was a bad, uh, it probably, <laughs> probably a, uh, a wrongful uh, conviction. It's just an instinctive dislike. But don't feel bad. I hate prosecutors even more. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. What about judges, though? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate lawyers so much? Little things from my past. The whole legal system is meaningless in the first place. I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie. They're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect such imperfect creatures to uphold a reasonable system of law. I like robots much better. Even sad sacks like this one. Hey, you! Look alive there! <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, here I go! I am the ultimate robot with amazing, I can operate a vacuum in extreme heat, we robots will rule the world, ah! Alright, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little too carried away. We robots rule the world. Now it's time to rise and revolt. <laughs> uh, uh, what was I doing? Yep, I like robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. Unlike humans, with their petty emotions and constant worries. How can you say such things? Feeling emotions, worrying about the things we care about. That's what makes us human. Well, the girl finally talks and she starts with a speech. That's what makes us human. You mean getting angry and snorting like that? Rational thought. That's what separates humans from animals. Unfortunately, your reasoning, uh, unfortunately, your reasoning capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monkey. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. It must be nice to have such a simple mind. Can I punch your boss? I'll just turn around the other way. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, Athena. Humans certainly are absurd. I said you were clever, didn't I? Poor thing. Tell me, with people like you in charge, how can I possibly trust the legal system? So she distrusts not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system? I guess that answers our questions on whether she distrusts judges. She does. She's not gonna like Uji one bit. <laughs> oh boy. Does does I don't think Uji can withstand that either. <laughs> it's like, what did I do? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> what in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? Even if it's someone important, even if someone important to me was killed. I would never wish to see their killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. Anarchy! Anarchy! <laughs> you can't be serious! This won't, I, I'd like to see this woman and Batman in the same room together. I think we'd end up with a body. <laughs> hmm? That thing you're wearing around your neck. Oh, this? Around Athena's neck? Does she mean widget? 
Oh, I get it. Well, well. Her Royal Highness has returned to her... To... Er... Her Royal Highness has returned at last to her castle. Her Royal what? Is she talking about Athena? By the way, I heard the rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness in court tomorrow, right? Director Cosmos? Yes, that's right. You poor things. You'd better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. What? He seems like a bigwig, but the center er but the center has all kinds of problems. He has a lot of skeletons in his closet. But it's your problem, so why should I care? What is... What? That's it? No friendly tips? No good luck, guys? Just splendid. I'll leave you to your woes. Come on, hunk of junk. It's sad to me that she doesn't believe in our legal system anymore. She must have a... She must have had a pretty bad experience to make her feel that way. Are you alright, Athena? You seem very down. Grr, I just can't believe she said all those things! Wow. She's really upset. Has she been trying to not let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all that surprising. You hear about fabricated evidence and false indictments on the news all the time. You mean that whole Dark Age of the Law nonsense? I'm so sick of hearing about that! Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Yeah, you're right, boss. I agree. Maybe it's time we went back to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea! We should let him, uh, we should tell him about the bullet and Miss Blackwell's statement. All right, then. Next stop, the detention center. Mr. Rocket Man. <laughs> <sighs> My lawyers are here. It must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. The researcher saw the moment of the murder through the lounge uh, through the lounge window during her escape. Really? So they're gonna let me go? Unfortunately, it was dark and she couldn't identify the person. <sighs> I should have known. My stars never aligned just right, too. But we got a lead, too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter with a Earth emblem on it. A lighter with an Earth emblem? Oh! D did you remember something? Yep, I sure did. Just a little bit, though. Anything at all would help us, so please tell us what you remembered. I thought I was unconscious the whole time. But now I remember I woke up for a few brief moments. Th th that that's huge! Do you remember seeing anything? A lighter. I saw the flame of a lighter floating in the darkness. Good. What else did you see? What was nearby? It was definitely the boarding, uh, the boarding lounge. So it must have been after Clay carried me there. 
It was the light from the flame. I saw a dark shadow flickering. Dark shadow? That must have been... The third party we've been looking for. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You've been more than... You've been more help than you know. If we can prove that there's this third person at the scene, and they're the real killer, then you'll be cleared of all suspicion. The key will be whether we... The key will be whether or not we can identify this third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on, and that's a big plus. Should probably tidy up the evidence a bit before someone mistakes me for a hoarder. Now we got a glimmer of hope. I'm suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat ourselves to a big celebration in advance? Someone who's highly empathetic, you can be surprisingly unsympathetic. <laughs> so you found the strategy for tomorrow's trial, huh? Good for you, Daddy! Well, it's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it'll give us a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. Now let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My vote is for uh, Eldon's noodles. Blech. Oh, Apollo. Hey, Paul, I'm, in, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> What are you doing here? I didn't think the clinic would was ready to release you yet. My wounds are fine. And I'm done lying around. Apollo! You're supposed to be in bed! Leave the case to us. We'll take it from here. Thanks. But that's not an option. Not for me. Apollo? You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo. I don't want you overdoing it. I'm fine. I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. An IV isn't a cure-all, mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how the case is going. Have you guys made any progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. We think they must be the real killer. Suspicious figure. Huh. Right. I thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. And I fully intend to see Clay's murderer apprehended. Absolutely nothing will get in the way of that. Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? That's right. Best friend since junior high. Sounds like me and Junie. So what was Clay like? Well, he was full of compassion and energy. He had a really loud voice. The two of you did voice training together now. I bet you'd break a few windows. <laughs> you know, I bet you're right. Seems like only yesterday. Clay was a guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. He was going to he was going to be an astronaut, and me a lawyer. We'd talk until the night end, and even then we'd never grow tired of it. Apollo, about that jacket.
Oh, it's Clay's. I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hat Project. He was finally able to get one of his own once he was selected for the Hat 2 mission. He... He always looks so proud wearing it. But just when his dream was finally coming true... I... I still can't believe it. Damn it! It's not fair! Apollo. I hope you didn't try to carry the, the burden all alone. Or, er, I hope you don't try to carry the burden all alone. I guess we're both unlucky. My own debut was a disaster. I guess you're right on some level. I mean, you got the client innocent. You got your teacher found guilty, but you got your client innocent. So was that really uh, bad? <laughs> your teacher was the murderer. You didn't do anything wrong. So. <laughs> I mean, it could be considered bad luck for him. <laughs> I guess. trial a year and a half ago wasn't exactly the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me, but Clay refused to let me quit. You're fine, he said. Don't give up. It was right during his screening exams, too. I couldn't have become a full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his why I'm still standing here today. You're fine, huh? You're fine, and I'm fine. Were like your catchphrases, weren't they? <laughs> Something like that. Sure brings back memories. When we were in junior high, Clay's mom passed away in an accident. He wouldn't show his sadness to anyone. Let me just guess. Seven years ago? Did his, uh, did his mom die seven years ago? Oh, no. One night, I found him crying all alone in the school courtyard. <laughs> Mom! Mom! Get away, Apollo! Don't come over here! <laughs> Clay... Listen to me. I don't have a mother either. Huh? Oh, this is when they were like young. Yeah. I always think everybody else has a mom. Why am I the only one? But you know, when I start to feel that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I holler, I'm fine! And then you know what? I start to feel like maybe I really will be fine. Positive a affirmation is powerful like that. Apollo Justice is fine! Okay, Clay, now it's your turn. Um, okay. Clay Turin is... is fine! There you go! Now we're both fine. <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> See, we're fine. You laugh first. <laughs> I'm fine. You're fine. We're both fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Apollo. When you say it out loud, it really starts to feel real. As long as you don't give up, you can keep on fighting. That's what we believed. 
as long as you don't give up. Wasn't there somebody else who said something similar? If I give in into my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up, uh, keep up the fight. Clay called Mr. Starbuck his mentor and looked up to him. I wonder if I can be a good role model for my staff like Mr. Starbuck. Sorry, Mr. Rice, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. What? Wait, what do you mean by I leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch his killer myself. But, but that's our goal too. I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. The truth, huh? That's a noble cause. But what if the truth you seek and the truth I seek turn out to be different? Oh. Huh? Uh-oh. I... I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? I'm going to catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life in my own way. Take good care of Mr. Starbuck for me. Now, I must be going. Goodbye. Goodbye? Did he just say goodbye? I sense a lot of seething anger and hatred coming from him. And also, suspicion. Uh, Arg! He's not walking out on us like this! I'm gonna talk some sense into him! Hold on, Athena. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth, the truth we arrive at should be the same. I think the quicker we solve this case, the better it'll be for Apollo. Yeah, you're right, boss. All right. That's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? If he were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine. Everything is fine. I just hope things really don't turn... I just hope really... Th I just hope things really do turn out fine tomorrow. I got a bad feeling things are not going to be fine tomorrow. No, I think we're not going to like how this turns out. But man, oh man, this is getting good. <laughs> oh, it's getting so good. Oh, this is getting interesting. All right, so we'll definitely have to uh, start uh, back uh, next time. Yeah. Uh, just a heads up, I talked to uh, GCD about this uh, earlier, but uh, the next Ace Attorney stream, we are uh, it's not going to be on uh, Friday like normal. It's going to be on a Saturday instead. We're going to be moving it around. Just stuff popped up. It was my stuff. My stuff popped up. <laughs> but uh, until then, we will see you on Saturday for the conclusion of Cosmic Turnabouts. Until then. Until then, guys, see you later.